Um, I call the select board, uh, the select board meeting of May 14th, uh, 19, 2018 to order. Uh, I'm Barry Berman, acting chair of the select board. Um, I want to quickly go over the agenda tonight. Um, Mr. Friedman is going to be a little bit late, so um, we're just we're going to get going. We're going to first start off with liaison reports and public comment, followed by um, the town manager's report, um, and then we're um, we're going to um, go into. Um, the proclamations, police week proclamations, and public uh, works proclamations, and then a fire badge, bit. firefighter ba uh, badge pinning. Sorry, I've been fighting a really bad cold. We're then going to jump back to number two, uh, which is open session for topics not reasonably anticipated, 48 hours. Uh, where basically, I had asked um, Bob to send out a, um, as you all got, uh, recommendations for. Um, uh, what you guys wanted for liaison, and then I made my nominations, and we'll discuss that, uh, and then jump back into um, the rest of the agenda, where we'll talk about the town manager's contract, um, select board policy article one, which specifically is going to deal with communications, um, and then the economic development project communication, um, which we had talked about, I think, a couple of meetings ago, um, where we're going to discuss sort of select board members' roles and some of the economic development uh, as li community liaisons. Um, and then uh, we have minutes, and, and then we're going to go into um, executive session. We're going to discuss two issues, one relative to collective bargaining, and then discuss strategy with respect to interest in real estate. So um, nothing else further ado. Um, why don't I start off, um, why don't I start off um, to my left this time with liaison reports. Sure. Uh, so ZBA met on May 2nd um, to discuss the Eaton Lakeview project. Uh, the developer has said that they're going to consider reducing the size and height of the development. Um, further discussions will take place on July 18th. Um, there's also a traffic study that will get underway quickly, if it hasn't already, in order to take into consideration um, school year traffic as opposed to waiting until later in the summer when that uh, data won't be available. Um, uh, they're asking for the peer review study um, to be completed by June 28th um, so that they're available um, with time to review for the, that July 18th meeting. Um, at the CPDC meeting on May 7th, um, there were minor modifications to development at 306 Main Street to the site plan. Um, and they're yeah, so also. Which development is that? 306 Main. Yeah, um, that's the. Um, so do office that's building? Sunoco. Sunoco, maybe? 306. No. Mm -hmm. 306. Uh, um, um, and they're also reviewing their guiding principles um, regarding design guidelines, um, specifically regarding uh, compatibility. Uh, and there's going to be additional conversations of that in the future. So uh, a question I have for that, Vanessa, um, I think la it might have been a year ago, maybe, Bob, remind me, maybe a little bit more. We actually met with this with CPTC jointly to kind of talk about um, kind of design guidelines and sort of neighborhood impacts on the stuff. Is, is that something that folks would think might be useful to have again, or is it too early, or? Um, the, 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 the select board itself wasn't discussed in this. Um, I mean, it, it seems like it's they're still in the preliminary stages. Okay. Right. So um, I can ex um, suggest if they want to have a discussion with us that we're open to that around. when they're ready for yeah. it. Yeah, we, we did that. I think we did that last We've time. Done it a couple of times. Most recently that I remember was at Parker Middle School. Oh, was it that long ago? No. I don't remember one since. Oh, do you? Oh, when we did it there, okay. At Parker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we but it was it's sort like of a year and a half ago. Design guidelines. All right, yeah. I, I'm just sort of. I mean, I know that when we met jointly together, it's been very fruitful. Yeah, I, I let Jean know because one of you mentioned that um, a meeting or two ago, and she said basically they're very busy, but you know, I know you're yeah. going to have to add a meeting. They can't add you to this. No, I know, I know. Well, I mean, just something to we the can camera. invite them here. You can add a meeting. That's that, all. Thank okay, um, Dan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> 
in uh, my capacity as one of the MBTA uh, advisory board members, uh, or one of the five that can be an advisory board, I guess. Uh, I visited the uh, Keolis uh, Commuter Rail Maintenance Facility in Somerville today. This is the, uh, uh, Keolis operates the MBTA uh, commuter rail system, better known as the Purple Line, uh, both north and south of Boston. Uh, they have an eight-year contract with uh, renewal options. They're the fifth largest commuter, commuter rail operation in North America, 14 lines covering 394 route miles serving 137 stations. They do not operate the subways or buses, but they have complete dominion over the commuter rail, uh, including the hiring of staff, uh, the maintenance and repair of locomotives and coaches, which is what this facility is designed to do, maintenance and repair of track stations and other infrastructure, and uh, implementing its snow plan for significant weather events. Uh, this is uh, shows you a locomotive with a, I think that's a 20 ton capacity gantry crane that can actually lift that locomotive up and put the, uh, the motors back under it. Uh, for those that don't know, the uh, don't hold on there. That's a uh, the diesel engine. I think they tore the locomotive uh, carriage completely apart there. Uh, the diesel actually produces electricity. It does not directly operate the wheels. The, the wheels are actually electric, mo large electric motors, lots of amps, and the diesels uh, run the motors basically. So you're you're riding electric trains, one way or the other. Uh, you can see there's like a little roundabout there. That's how they they turn the. Uh, wheel units around and fit them back under the uh, the trains as they lift them. Here's a walk under bay where minor repairs can be done. Uh, this is a pretty impressive set of jacks that can completely lift up a uh, commuter rail car and uh, to allow work underneath. And uh, there's another walk under pit for one of the engine bays. Uh, look at the backyard. This is the big blue building you see coming out on the commuter rail on the left about 11 o'clock <coughs> on the north station. They actually service trains uh, from both the south station and north. The south station's train have to make a circuitous route through, I think they're called, there's a connection in, Wo in Win Worcester and then they hop on the other track lines. Uh, it's a little more roundabout because that, that particular junction is closed right now. Uh, this is one of the newer trains. Uh, these engines are maintained, when they come in for a overhaul, it takes about two days. They've reduced that down from four or five days for the older models. This is one of the 2020 series. Uh, much more fuel efficient. That's one of the snowplow blades. They, they're not that big. They have some super huge ones, but most of the trains just carry plow blades of that size. And there's one of the uh, diesel engines up close. So, Did you get a of yourself on a train? Uh, no, I didn't get that. Uh, you got the hat. Do you have a little hard hat there? I got the hard hat. The, the yeah, I, yeah, I looked like a, I was a total railroad mo for a day. <laughs> Here's one of the towing units. It's kind of like a harbor master. It doesn't let the, the captain drive the ship. They shut the engine off and use this to push it into the garage for maintenance. They can actually pull a full train in for minor maintenance and actually do every other day. Uh, there's a like three football field length building on the end there where they do that. That's pretty cool. So that's a quick turnaround. Uh, to keep the uh, wheels true, this is a uh, essentially a big lathe that they use on the wheels. And they also try to train the conductors not to both brake and accelerate. And that actually was the old way of braking, so they would hit both. But that, that tends to uh, put a lot of thermal stress on the wheels. So making the wheels last is both training and, and good maintenance. And here's the maintenance bay for the big double-decker cars that you see. So very interesting. And I want to give a shout out to Justin Thompson, who's the uh, PR manager for Cabolas Commuter Services for that fine tour. Okay. Okay, second item, um, Board of Health. Uh, just met this evening. Um, it was reported that H4479 uh, has passed the House. That raises the uh, tobacco purchase age to 21. Uh, it, Senate action is anticipated shortly. It's also reported that it's already tick and mosquito season, so everybody should be taking pre preventative measures, wearing long sleeve garments if you're out in the woods, uh, certainly to protect against the ticks, wearing appropriate uh, repellents. Lyme disease is prevalent again. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's coming out early this year. Uh, regarding the pesticide regulations, uh, 
that is in semi-final form. Uh, it was discussed this evening. The board will meet again on June 12th to finalize the language that they're going to pre be presenting to the board in our meeting on the 19th of uh, June. Uh, there, there's some final language on enforcement and fine, uh, how enforcement is done and fine levels that they want to propose plus implementation dates. So a little more fine tuning and then they'll be meeting with us. Um, regarding Reading Village, uh, the health agent reported that uh, the developer is conforming to all DEP sampling requirements and implementing DEP risk reduction measures as directed. The uh, final item is the VASC. Uh, Barry and I have been going back and forth on planning our series of interviews. Uh, I have distributed a set of the dates. I won't read them all here, but uh, our intention for the benefit of the new board members uh, who may be serving on the VASC in the future, and the old board members who might be serving, is to uh, schedule one of those as a full-blown selectmen's meeting, posted as such, so that you can feel free to attend. So uh, I'd ask you to get back to us with, and there's a couple Tuesdays on there that might be better than some of the others. Did you send those out to us? I, I just sent it this evening. Oh, this, okay, I got yeah, a chance the to dates. Okay. Great. Uh, I also sent a list of the board's commissions, committees, is one or two things I need to still change on that. That's not quite right. And you've also got a list of all the posted openings that I sent out this evening. There are quite a few, lots and lots of uh, openings, folks. Uh, so keep. Uh, have we? Have you talked to Matt about possibly getting a digest? Um, of the, no, not yet. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's probably between people we have to reappoint, and openings yeah. is like close to probably 100 people. A lot. Yep. Or like. It's, uh, yeah, it's in that vicinity. Okay. Okay. And that includes associate members that we could yes. definitely appoint. Okay. Including associates. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, well, obviously one of the things we want to do, I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, a hundred people to raise their hands and say, I, I volunteer for the town is to, is to really advertise it as much as possible. Um, Bob, I have not had a chance to talk to Matt. I know maybe have you to maybe like really just push this out newspaper. Yeah, it's already gone out. I'm just looking to see on the website where it is. Which uh, website, but maybe it. also on our Facebook Do, page. Or is there anything that exists like a one-page digest that has like a synopsis of the, what the board does um, and then uh, openings? Okay. Per, per board now. Yeah, there there's like one, one document that has everything. There's a one document summarizes all the openings, but there's not a one yeah. document for the page. There's a web page for every board. Yeah, that it would be nice to have it all in one place if we have staff time to put it together. I can, you know, I, I can work with I've just been sick, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I got time to, to okay. help too. That's yeah, just to really pump it out there. Yeah, I mean, count me in. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of folks that kind of got involved and engaged and want to stay engaged, and there's all these different opportunities that um, people may not even know about. So. Um, and we'd like to fill as many of them as we can. So, um, great. Very good. That's it. Um, John? Um, I have two brief things. One, we'll, we'll go from trains and planes and <laughs> committees. And things that uh, go. Hey, I'm reading uh, that to my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> to Pickleball. Um, we, I've been actually uh, meeting and corresponding over some period of time with um, a group that has really, uh, is maybe close to 100 people that play on a regular basis and we've got some limitations as to space. And um, so the long story short is that um, there was some concerns kind of back and forth between the Recreation Committee and maybe was it a DPW issue to paint an extra set of stripes on um, um, on one of the tennis courts, not in the newer ones, but in one of the parks. And um, and so recreation felt like, because it was maintenance, maybe I should talk to DPW. I did speak to them. They said they would be happy to do this, but recreation had to you know, approve it for use. So the long story short, we've got some expansion um, to the pickleball courts, and we'll see how that works out as it coexists with the with a slightly used tennis court. What's a pickleball court? Uh, pickleball is a very popular, very gaining popularity sport. Um, it tends to be played um, probably by, I would guess, people 50 and older. It's a little less strenuous than, you know, it's, it's a tennis type of game. Um, it's like a cross between ping pong and tennis. Yeah, it's, but it's very popular. And um, I, I think they play a couple of nights, you know, like a night and a, and a weekend. And they have 50, 60 people at every one of these things. And there's over 100 of them that oh, play yeah, on a regular basis. There you go. Uh, and I, I, there, currently there is a 
non-regulation size over at um, by, the, by uh, behind the tennis courts, tennis courts at Birch yeah. Meadow, kind of between, you know, next to the Little League field. But it doesn't have a fence, and it's not regulation size, and it's a lot tougher to play, and especially as it's gained in popularity. So I think that uh, uh, between tennis and recreation, they came up with a good solution, and you know we're going to see how it coexists with uh, with the tennis usage. It's a it's a lesser used tennis court, so so that's going on. Um, the other thing I'd like to bring up, just to put it kind of on the table. Um, we have, uh, I, I got, I've gotten several calls over the course of the last several days from some neighbors about tr our tree lawn policy. Um, they didn't know it was our policy when they called me, but it turns out to be our policy. Um, so there are two residents that, um, whose tree lawns were paved for 25 to 40 years. And they, you know, in a, in a place where they could not really uh, park very well. I mean, obviously they stay off the street in the winter time, but we have a policy which is very old. Um, this will be a shock to everybody here. That says um, you can't pay it. And so, because some work was done in the street, it came to our attention. DPW is doing their job, following the selectman's policy. We've got a couple of residents that you'll be hearing from mm -hmm. asking for an exception um, to have so they want back. to unpave it? It's on Linden? It, no, it's no. on Park. It's been okay. it's been paved forever. One of yeah. them for twenty five years. It's almost grandfather. The other one for forty years. Mm -hmm. um, and because there was some work done down there. Oh, I see. Yeah. They got unpaved for the work to be done. Got it. Then they got repaved mm. and Today they got unpaved again. Oh boy! Government hard at work. So, so um, and you know, it really ties back, frankly, to <laughs> a policy. I, you know, I, I think we've got to be able to look at this policy, and I so just put it out there for so that we can get it on our agenda. I know it's not there tonight. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'll have quite a bit. We'll just deal with it. No. Yeah, I mean, no, it's okay. It, it's got to get on the agenda. It's one of those policies that needs to be looked at, along with many, many others. That you know, some we pay attention to and some we don't. But you know, our DPW guys were doing their job, right. and the neighbors were not happy. And I understand that because they've had a, an experience of 25 to 40 years of having it, their yard a certain way, um, and now it's not. So, um, if I might, just as I explained to John. Um, this is one of your policies in which there's going to be opinions on both sides, yeah. even on the same street. And mm. that was the situation yeah. on Park. Some liked it, some didn't like it. So there's not always easy answers. Mm. I agree with John generally that you know there are some selectmen's policy that you just scratch your head and say, why? And this, this is one of them, a cul-de-sac. Why yeah. can't someone pave in front of their yard? Why do they have to put in a tree lawn when there's no sidewalk to begin with? There is no sidewalk mm -hmm. at this place, and there, so it's, it's a dead like end the gap street. between the sidewalk and the street. Mm -hmm. is calling out for a tree lawn. Right. There isn't such a thing. I, and, you know, there is an exception policy. Right. And I have suggested to them that they write to all of us, which is the policy that we would follow <coughs> to request an exception, which, you know, that. they'll be in to see us. And right. Maybe we Good. can look at that exception, and they're going to ask for an exception and a repaving. So uh, I just kind of want to put it out there right. so we Thank don't you. let it get lost in the shuffle of agendas and so forth. Uh, uh, anything else? That's it. That's it. Okay. All right, so um, Andy actually sent me a couple of liaison ports I'm going to read real quick just so that we can get them out of the way and when he gets back we don't have to stop what we're doing. Um, uh, Climate Advisory Committee, uh, Bicycle Recycling and Giveaway was held on May 4th and 5th. was another great success, 10th year of the event. Uh, he attended the school committee. Um, administration application for extraordinary relief under the circuit breaker program was accepted. Oh, that's great. They need some money. $154,000 uh, coming back. It's money to be spent in FY18 to offset the cost in special ed and tuition transportation. Oh, that's circuit breaker. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that was money they were applying for. Yeah. They announced two uh, appointments. The high, uh, they hired a new high school principal, Kathleen Boynton, uh, from more than uh, 40 that was selected. I think she was the assistant principal in Bedford. And then they hired uh, a STEM coordinator, Heather Leonard, 
um, who I think is the principal over at Barrows, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, but that was a position that was made possible by the override. Um, she's currently the principal in Barrows. Um, they've obviously started a new search. They already have 15 applications in. Um, and uh, the school committee heard a quarterly FY18 budget update from Gail. Um, they have $264,000 remaining in their total budget, normal projection number for this time of year. Um, nothing unusual there. So those were Andy's um, liaison reports. I'm going to do mine really quickly. Um, so there's, uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to let everybody know that next, uh, our next meeting, June 4th, I will actually not be here. I'm going to turn the gavels, all three of them, over to Dan. Um, it's my son that says um, he's graduating from high school great, next week, and they're doing an honorary dinner, so we're going to be up there for that. Um, so a, couple, a few things really quickly, and I, I, I meant to mention this um, last time, but uh, we, we got a letter um, uh, from the um, Mass Historical uh, Board that long time uh, Reading Historical uh, Associate uh, member Virginia Adams was honored for being a 40 year <coughs> member. Um, and basically she was given the honor, the honor of um, Volunteer of the Year throughout the whole entire state. Terrific. So we know what a gem Virginia does here. I mean, you need to know anything about what happened in this town. She's got it at her fingertips. And, and so I think it was really nice that they acknowledged that. And I want to let everybody here know that, you know, out of all the historical boards across the Commonwealth, Virginia was given that honor. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. Great. Um, Sounds like that calls for a proclamation from us. I think so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's a good idea, John. So um, I have the letter so we can kind of work that up and have her come in here and accept it. So. Um, also, you all probably got uh, uh, emails from Kevin Bowmiller, our veterans agent, inviting us all to Memorial Day. It's a really, really special event in Reading with a parade and, and some really solemn ceremonies at all four um, of our town cemeteries. I know I've heard from Andy and from Vanessa. I don't know if you, are you guys going to be around? I'm going to be out of town. You're going to be out of town, Dana. You are. Uh, I'm if you right now, depending on. Uh the birth of a child. Oh, okay. Well, we'll wow. keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. That's so, so essentially, um, what we'll do is, you know, we do we do the uh, ceremonies at each of the four things. So between the three of us, we'll one of us will do double duty. Um, and Vanessa, you get to march in the parade. Very exciting. You get to wear comfortable <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also sent out an email about vacation schedules. I got it back. Uh, Bob, did people get back to you? I don't have anything fixed right now. Okay. That was easy. So in terms of. Uh, our, our, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that we don't, you know, if, if folks aren't going to be away, maybe we can juggle our summer schedule. But right now, it doesn't seem like we haven't, we have to do that yet. Or? Yeah, no, it looks, it looks like you're fine. Um, you're going to have four at every meeting that I know of. Okay. Um, Andy did have a request, and it made sense that the future goals discussion got moved to a full board meeting, which yeah. I've done. Okay. All right. So that's good. Obviously, if anything comes up, let us all know because we're going to have to juggle around some things. Um, uh, one thing real quick, the, um, the Garden Club is having their annual plant sale at the Town Common this Saturday. I don't know if anybody's gone before, but they have the most incredible plants, vegetables, pollinator plants, all kinds of things um, for your gardens. It, uh, a lot of them are uh, that they buy, but also a lot of them are kind of the special cuttings that the Garden Club members do themselves. Um, that they offer for sale. These are like known winners that they've been cultivating their own gardens for years. I'm told if you don't, I think it starts at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock. I'm yeah, told if you don't, quick. I'm told yeah. if you don't get there quick, all the really good stuff goes, and it's really good prices, and it supports all the efforts of the Garden Club. And all you have to do is walk around here, town, anywhere, any island, anything. The Garden <coughs> Club um, just beautifies this town incredibly. So this Saturday, and I think it's rain or shine. Um, yep. So you know, um, get there early. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is um, we all had sort of heard about it on May 23rd. I think it's a Thursday night at 6 p.m. at the Scatini Library. Uh, the schools are sponsoring a school uh, security summit. Um, and it's going to be pre uh, presentations by Dr. Doherty and Chief Sagala about some of the efforts that you know we're doing with school security. God bless. Um, obviously, a lot of things can't be talked about. Um, but it's an open meeting, and people are free to ask questions. Um, it's, I think, from 6 to 7. It's scheduled early because there's some conflicts at the middle school. There's some events at 7 o'clock. But I think it's, it's really an opportunity for folks to come and find out about some of the school security measures that are either in place or maybe being planned. 
Um, so um, I would encourage folks who are interested to come to that. So uh, that's all my reports. Andrew, I gave yours already. Thank so you. um, we're all set. Appreciate it. Um, so now I'll, I'll turn it over to public comment. Uh, Mr. Brown, I, I always look in that direction. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Phil uh, Brown, for being uh, We have some openings on the Cemetery Board of Trustees. Yes. Not an exciting board, but uh, we try our best. Uh, the other thing, too, I think the new regulations will have been published. They will be out, and they will be enforced as of July 1st. So you might be hearing a lot of flack over some of the stuff that's going to be in. Uh, primarily, to summarize it quickly, we're limiting to what and how much we put on any grave site. And number one is for safety, and number two is we just don't have the manpower. Uh, even though we, I think right now we have five and a half people at much room. One's on uh, Kepler uh, soft duty. And uh, when I look back over the records, that's exactly the same we did in 1978 with two cemeteries. So okay. we're not being mean. We just want to mm -hmm. make the cemeteries look as nice as they can, and everybody has an equal you know, opportunity. No, and, and you guys do a great job over there, especially around Memorial Day, which is coming up. Well, just, I, uh, I honestly don't know how they do it, but they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Bill, I actually, I'm, I'm glad you came and brought that up because I was approached by somebody at a meeting, I think last week, who, who wanted to volunteer. Yeah. Um, not so much necessarily be on the committee, but um, I guess this person walks a lot through town and go, you know, walks through the cemetery and notices there's been a lot of tree damage and things in the cemetery. And he's offered to help either with planting new trees or, or just any kind of beautification. Uh, and I think if you want to take that up with Jeff, I don't think that we can have much to do with that, but uh, okay. we just with Jeff. All right, all. so Jeff, would you mind if I connected sure. the two of you? Exactly. And but if you're interested, Barry, tell them, come into my meeting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we, we drive them guys. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Great. And, and if we don't, we'll bury them. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> um, yep. Steve. Stephen Crook, uh, member of the RCTV Board of Directors. One, our annual meeting is coming up this next the week from Thursday, May 24th. I wanted to invite the Board of Selectmen, also, also any town staff or any other boards or committees who want to come. That's Thursday, the 24th of May at 6 p.m. at RCTV Studios okay. on 557 Main Street. So, food and goodies? Or? Food and goodies, yes. Oh, boy. Okay. Of course. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, Peter Kramer, Franklin Street. Okay. Uh, I have two questions for the board I'd like to look in over the summer on the plowing of the snow in the public lot behind uh, CBS. Town seems to be wasting an extreme amount of money back there. And uh, this comes from, I took care of the child was building for 29 years. This is not a, a, a spur of the moment thing. If you look at the uh, plan, that's the uh, lot behind CBS. Uh, uh, number one is the Ready Cooperative lot. They push their snow onto town property year after year after year. They push it into the number five. That's where the town pushes snow. Number two is the uh, dental, uh, it's the old Simon's right. building. Yep. Uh, the town literally goes in and cleans the snow out of there, then puts it into the, block, into the pile five. Number three, I think, is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the awards, the awards store there. Oh, yeah. The town literally, literally goes in there and pulls the snow out of there and pushes it over. The number four belongs to, I believe, the Lynch properties. Uh, all of these, number six is the Charles's. I don't know where that snow goes because I haven't done it for about eight years now. But the town hauls the snow, plows the snow for free. Now this goes back, as far as I know, about 40 years. I don't think the town of Reading taxpayers should be supporting the merchants. So snow removal is a very expensive proposition, as we all know. I think the selectors should look into this. Also, the clearing of sidewalks. No town around here clears their downtowns. None. We so waste a lot of money cleaning. Are you the suggesting that we don't clear the sidewalks so that people can't get into the Merchants should clear the sidewalks. Okay. Every other town, Mr. Chairman. Every other town, the merchants are responsible. We can haul the snow later on. 
but the merchants should be responsible. All they should get is one snowblower pass, as, as everybody else does on the school route. That's it. We spend exorbitant <coughs> amount of money cleaning those sidewalks when there's nobody shopping. Nobody shops in the snowstorm, and I plowed Charles's for 29 years. So this is not an idle, you know, stopping by. But I think we should look at this, take care of our nickels and dimes, and then the dollars will come into play. Okay. But I think you really should, there's a serious amount of money here. Hauling, hauling snow can go up to $1,000 an hour. And we do it for free. <coughs> All right, sir, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Any other public comment? Okay, hearing none. Bob, are you uh, ready? Um, three quick things. Um, first, this Saturday I can't attend. I was invited and I invite the board. Uh, the residents at Pearl Street is having a reconnect with old friends and colleagues from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, I have information if anyone can make that on the town. Also on, um, let's see, uh, last night I went to uh, Reading Cultural Council Awards reception along with Senator Lewis and Lisa Simmons from the Mass Cultural Council uh, we spoke. And it was a very nice turnout. Um, the Reading Cultural Council, on behalf of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, gave out a number of grants, to, small grants, to many organizations in town. And as Senator Lewis and I both noticed, um, a few years back, you recall that Jesse Wilson started a, uh, a downtown cultural district exploration, yes. I guess I'll say. And that's turned into, and I always get it wrong, so it's either Arts Reading or Reading Arts. It's Arts Reading. Okay. Arts I, I, and I actually went to one of their meetings. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable if you think about how many arts organizations yeah. and cultural organizations there well, are in town with that's what hundreds we, of people. That's what we did in the early days is we all knew something and we put our thoughts together and it was honestly was shocking how much is in this town. Yeah. And as the presentations went on last night and I had made that remark up front, uh, Senator Lewis said, I, I can't believe, I mean, I know you said it, but it's mm -hmm. unbelievable. Right. Uh, the diversification and amount of events uh, that this town supports is phenomenal. And, you know, the one missing item for everyone is a central location if we could share it. Right. You know, Wakefield has found a building to do that with. We've never found a building. As, so yeah, as, they have the Albion site. As, yeah. yeah, exactly. As the board, yeah. as some of the board members know, we've met an executive session in the past and looked at the post office as whether that would... Uh, supported and the price was just way beyond our means um, and that's you know something I, I encouraged uh, Jason last night I said go find us some money we'll find the building right. no, but a shout out to the cultural groups in town um, they, they somewhat do fly a little low on the radar Many residents know certain ones of them, but they don't understand the whole picture and how large it is. And they don't, they, they're only starting now to work with each other. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think one of the, one of the things that they kind of do to sort of kind of their introductory sort of event um, is I think in October, sort of a cultural, um, I, I, I botched this, but um, you know, some kind. Of, they've been doing an event in October, yeah, right? To have, yes, to display that all night. the work. It's the fifteenth. All the work that. of all the different yep. groups, um, and you know, which is great because you know, in the next few years, we're going to have you know, the downtown is going to is going to be built up. There's going to be people living down there, going out to eat, looking for some things to do. You know, art and culture are vi bring vibrancy. Um, and if yeah. we can kind of knit all that together and make it part of our economic development policy, yeah. then I think we're on the right track. And we have some good people in so And that was great. our initial plan, and that's absolutely um, Secretary Ash's plan, is it does bring economic development. It goes hand in hand. Um, and you know, there was a shout out to some local businesses also, which I'll, I won't remember them all. But some of the businesses are very good about sponsoring nights for the art and local artists to display right. some of their work. Right. So I think this is something the board's going to hear more about. Yeah, no, I think so too. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. Just oh, great. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna um, we're gonna jump into um, proclamations. Do you want to do that first? Or you want to do the badge pinning? Get a lot of folks. You know what? Actually, that's a, that's a really yeah. good idea, Dan. Let's do that. So. Um, they're all out there enjoying Bring themselves. Them let's let's get it done before there's a no, fire. No, no bagpipes tonight, I guess. Okay, darn it. They're afraid of the tornado warnings. <laughs> Yeah, 
さい。あれだ。応援。あ。This is a big work from back here. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. My God. Mark time. Mark. Ready. Hold. Player. Face. I'd like to say uh, uh, <coughs> congratulations and thank you to the Reading Police for Reading Police Week. Uh, they do a fantastic job and I'm, we work with them each and every day. And i just like to say thank you for all the hard work you do throughout the year. Thanks, sir. I actually thought you were here for us, but I didn't know it was a bad the assistant chief set this up to support you. So, yeah, I felt he told me that they were there for you. <laughs> you want to step up? So um, tonight um, we have uh, a promotion to announce and we uh, have two new uh, firefighters. And tonight first I'd like to do uh, Captain McGarry and the vicar. Um, Captain Anthony Vicar has been with us for 11 years and he was um, he was acting lieutenant for about 11 months um, when we had a uh, captain retire. So we, uh, he, he uh, we had to have a civil service exam and, and uh, in order to make the uh, final promotion. But Garrett spent a considerable amount of his time uh, taking courses to, to improve himself on uh, command, leadership. He's a firefighter one and two certified, fire officer one and two certified. He's taken a number of command classes at the National Fire Academy. I just recently um, took their two-week program uh, um, in uh, managing officer. Uh, he's taken a number of years to the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy. He has a uh, master's in public administration. He has a bachelor's degree in fire science from the Anna Maria College. He's a licensed paramedic. Um, and he, uh, he's been working in the EMS field since 2003. He also spent a lot of time uh, running our EMS program and training. He's been doing a fantastic job with uh, his captain on, on group two. Um, both myself and the assistant chief couldn't, couldn't, be, couldn't be happy with this performance. So we're very fortunate to have him. I'd like to say congratulations to you. Thanks, Chief. You're doing a great job tonight. Um, Garrett's wife is going to be here. Uh -huh. If I could just make a comment on the promotion process, I want to tip my cap to Chief Jackson and Chief Burns for coming up, especially with an exercise that no one could have studied for. It was something that was very obscure but could be very practical. And I was privileged to see what it's like for people to think on their feet. And every single candidate did an excellent job. It was really very impressive. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to introduce to you Chris, uh, Chris, Chris Smith. Chris has been uh, with us. We started in uh, January. We sent him to the Academy when it was really cold. We <laughs> 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 enjoyed that program. Uh, Chris spent um, six years. Did you spend six years with Oakland? I just yeah. I thought I had uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, spent uh, six years with Goldport Ambulance Service from Gloucester and four years with Trinity Ambulance out of Lowell. He's uh, EMT certified uh, and um, he's also attended North Shore Community College. Uh, he got his uh, paramedic certification in 2007. Uh, Chris served in the Army National Guard from 2000 to 2008 and uh, he received the Distinguished Soldier of the Year Award for his uh, service in Bravo Company in the uh, first 182nd. So, 
Excellent. Say congratulations to you. We're really glad to have you. So he's been through our in-house training program. Uh, we do a two-week day program, and then we have a, a, a several-month program where we stand up with senior firefighters to, to really yeah. get into the meeting and the operation. Uh -oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nick. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Nick was a uh, paramedic shift commander for eight years uh, from the paramedic program out of Royal General Hospital. Uh, I'm sorry, Lawrence General Hospital. Very busy system. Uh, Nick also has uh, 16 years experience with uh, American Medical Response. He's been an EMT since 1992 and uh, attended Northern Essex Community College and uh, received his paramedic certification from the New England EMS Institute in 1997. He received a scholarship award for academic achievement. Congratulations, we're really glad to have you. Thank you. And who's going to be the uh, <coughs> okay. Chief. Thank you. I want to thank the board for allowing us up here as well tonight. Uh, 1962, President Kennedy declared May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in recognition of all the police officers killed in the line of duty. Um, and again, it's very fitting to be here on May 15th this year specifically. So thank you for having us up here tonight for a conversation. Oh, Dan. I'd just like to say. Um, the open house was spectacular again this year. I know I was down there all morning long with the customer identification program going on. I think 83 families came through and took care of that. And despite the fact that it was kind of nasty weather, uh, big turnout and uh, as always a great job. If it wasn't for all these people here, I wouldn't be able to do it. So it's because of these people were able to do it. But no, thank you very much. Okay, time for the yep. proclamation. Move that the select board proclaim May 13th through May 19th as Police Week here in Reading. And the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require the police, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas <clears throat> the safety of our police officers is dependent Upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Reading Public Safety Communication Center, and whereas Reading police officers are a crucial contact point between our citizens and emergency services, and whereas May 15th is National Police Officers Memorial Day, honoring those men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and whereas police officers of the Reading Police Department have contributed substantially to the prevention of crime and the apprehension of criminals and play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of Reading citizens, and whereas members of the Reading Police Department exhibit compassion, understanding, and the highest standards of professionalism in the performance of their jobs. Now therefore we, the select board of the town of Reading, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim the week May 13th to May 19th, 2018 is National Police Week in the town of Reading in honor of the men and women whose dedication and professionalism keep our town and citizens safe. Do I hear a second? All those in favor? We award it? Yep, so there you go. Chief, you want to? Let me, we'll just come. Yep. 
you know, he wants to go around this way, or... Well, that's what Take yeah. 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 sure you want us in the picture. One step back. Two, one. All right, we all going up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, just there. Just going around? Yeah. 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 Coming around, or... <laughs> just you. Well, it's just awkward moment. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a <laughs> big crowd. Yeah. How about we move over here? Yeah, that'll work. Hey Barry, don't block, don't block the shot this time. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Good out. Yep. Show up. First time, every time out. Hey, hey guys, great job this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We were really busy and um, maybe we appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. We'll do our best. Thanks. But they're going up for you, Kim. Okay. okay. I think we have one more, too. Right? Uh, or oh, that's yeah, one. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait. All the Paul. Uniform personnel. Present Hums. Order comes. <clears throat> Speaking of parades. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I just want to say, I, you know, as they're leaving, yeah. um, we're just really, truly blessed, both our fire department and our police department, for um, for what they do. Um, they have to handle some really tricky situations. I mean, just this week, um, a shelter in place with a, you know, what turned out to be thankfully nothing, yep. but, you know, could have been something that could have been a catastrophe. These guys were Johnny on the spot, in control. Um, and, and, and also we read of, you know, of, a, of a major narcotics arrest here in town. Um, these guys are on, on the wall. And, you know, we went through the override. We knew how, how, how stressed and what they do. And I'm glad that helps on the way. And uh, we're really blessed to have these guys. So, um, Dan, you want to sure. yeah, help, uh, help our, you know, honor our, our other, our gonna, other I'm guys? Gonna, I'm going to honor our, uh, the people who uh, are the unsung heroes and, and for whom a friends group still does not exist. And I say that every year. <laughs> we call ourselves yeah. the third arm of public safety. The third arm. Right. The third arm, indeed. <laughs> and actually, I, you know, and that's true. The, ga the, the, gas, the gas situation, you guys are out there with yeah. police, with fire. Oh, yeah. Together. So yeah. we're really lucky. Okay. Move that the select board proclaim May 20th through May 26th as Public Works Week here in Reading. And the proclamation reads, whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral but often unnoticed part of our residents' everyday lives, and whereas the support of understanding and informed residents is vital to the efficient operation of public works programs such as sewers, water streets, highways, parks, and forestry, and solid waste collection, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of residents, this community do, of the residents of this community depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these services is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials and employees, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff our public works department is materially influenced by the residents' attitudes and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now therefore we, the select board of the town of Reading, Massachusetts, does hereby proclaim the week of May 20th to May 26th, 2018 as Public Works Week in the town of Reading 
And we call upon all residents and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing quality public works services to this community and to recognize the contributions which public works officials and employees make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Do I hear a second? Second. Um, no discussion. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Brown reminded me that I didn't uh, ask for a pose on the last one. Any opposed? <laughs> I have discussion. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, I mean, you're here by yourself, no bagpipes. Okay. Um, the guys are all home. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what you and your guys do is often very thankless, and it's just kind of an expectation. And I, don't, I think that those of us that are closest to it realize that it's you guys do more than what's expected in my opinion. Um, you always go out of your way, and I think that it's nice that we have this proclamation, but it's a good idea to say thanks out loud to you as the as the leader of the organization, and please pass that along to, to all your all your, all the people that work for you. I appreciate it, John. You know, it really, I mean, it's the guys in the trenches. I mean, yeah. the other guys are being Literally. good. <laughs> you guys are good. It's and, and, uh, you make well, on any given day, they get yelled at more than they get praised, but they really right. do. And that's because, you know, somebody having a, a thing that day you know but you they know, do such a good job across the board you know and a good example i mean you know i've got here are three water awards we got this year yep. i think it was something like on the paper that talked about we yeah. had one yes as, as just the operations uh, in general for the water department one as far as our lead uh, uh, program in the schools, testing and remediation. And the other one is to a specific operator, Eric, Eric Bislivy, who's a water supply coordinator. He gets a separate award based on his activities within, within the, uh, for DEP, working with them. I mean, we went to this, the, uh, the award ceremony at the State House, and there were like you know, 50 communities there. And um, on the way out, I, the, a couple of communities mentioned to me that, you know, maybe sometime Redding could take their foot off the gas a little bit and get somebody else a chance. We <laughs> awards in three separate categories, which are the only community that did that. So, and again, it's the guys, it's the dedication, and again, it's, it's not me, it's the guys in the trenches. They do a great job, and I just publicly I like to thank them. Well, you know, you hear anecdotally year round, you know, somebody will say, wow, something, you know, I was having a problem, you know, in front of my house with the snow and I, you know, I mean, I get that not everything goes perfect all the time, but we hear a lot of really good feedback. I know that's true throughout recreation, um, the cooperation that goes on with your department and, you know, with all, the, I mean, how many users are we talking about? And It's everybody know, in the town. It really is. I mean, you guys really touch everybody in the town everybody. of Reading, and, and yeah. it's. I'm glad we stop at least once a year and and really say thank you publicly. Okay. Uh. Um, I agree with all you said, obviously. And, and one of the interesting things that came out in the last sort of two years of override discussion um, was there was a, a lot of misunderstanding or lack of information in the general public that thought DPW was really large. So yeah. they would say things like, hey, you know, during a snowstorm, why can't you order in the water department to help sometimes? Well, everybody they are. plows snow. <laughs> the yeah. water department, the sewer department, the highway department, everybody. That's because there's a water main break during the snowstorm. Well, then they go do that. Yeah. Um, the this department, there was, a, there was 120 people um, 25 the, the years 80s. ago, and now yep. they're in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Obviously, equipment helps, but there's a lot of work in this town. There's a lot more town now than there was 20, 25 years ago. A lot more and they really town. do do an outstanding job. And the thing that I'm uh, proudest of is how these three departments and every department work together so well. That's the thing that you don't see in other communities. Some communities win awards, not as many as Reading, um, but very few communities work as well together. So when there's a scene, all of a sudden you're not introducing yourselves. You've already worked together. You've already practiced what you're probably saying. So thank you. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. So op opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah. Jeff, thank you very much. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank the guys for us, really. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Jeff, let's... Oh, come on. Picture. 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 Picture.
Okay. That's All right, good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, John. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you, the best part of this job is saying thank you. Yeah. And it, it goes a long yeah, way. Get, this, um, get rid of this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. No, There'll be three departments tomorrow that'll hear about what happened tonight if they're not already watching, and they'll be very proud. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, we're going to kind of jump right back into um, <coughs> topic two. Um, yep. Late last week, I, I thought it was a really good idea since we didn't have, actually we had, I think, two or three meetings before we had everybody here, given the, the schedules and vacations and things like that. And we, we did some changing of some liaison, and I just thought, you know, let's just take a look at the whole liaison um, assignments now, and let's just get it, just redo it for the year. So Bob had sent out an email, I think it asked everybody in our usual way, um, to kind of put in, you know, what you what you would like to do, what you don't like to want to do, what you know, what what you're kind of in the middle uh, of, and so everybody got uh, stuff back. And as uh, in my role of chair, I made I made nominations, which I believe you just guys just saw tonight. So um, I did complete it last night and sent it over to Bob. Uh, uh, Andy, you should know that when I made my nominations, I had not gotten yours yet. Mm -hmm. So um, the purpose here. Is, uh, is to kind of have to take a look at it, make sure everybody's satisfied. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to do a little horse trading, uh, I'm open to that. But let me let me give you some of my um, let me give you some of my thinking in some of this. Um, you'll notice that there have been there are liaisons uh, or boards and committees or commissions that maybe traditionally have maybe had one uh, member sort of serving. I've actually. Yeah. Um, I've actually sort of increased. There they go. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know>. yeah. <laughs> to, to work. I have the right thing. Um, That's what was handed out tonight. I don't find four. So, um, what I did was yeah, I. Um, That's I did. Picks. Um, what I did was I, I kind of doubled uh, on some of the ones that maybe uh, traditionally have had um, one person. And the idea being is that I think part of our role as uh, members of the select board is to try to attend as many meetings, try to get out there as much as we can. And sometimes with the schedule, it's really, really hard if there's only one of us. And you've been already at three meetings, and now you got to go to one, and you can't do it. So if we have two on some of the more major ones, bigger ones, things that have a lot of meetings, it's easier to cover. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll notice on where it says chair nominations, um, I have like a first name and a second name. It's not like that's a lead and then a second one. Yep. It's basically two equal people. Um, and I'm, what I'm hoping for is that the people who are involved in both of these as liaisons, that you guys will figure out a way to work together. I'll go to this meeting, you go to that meeting, I can't make it, what did you learn, what are you hearing? So that we really have more eyes and ears and feet on the ground. So that's why you'll see that there's two. Um, and so I tr what I try to do is try to accommodate as many people's first choices as possible. Um, John, you had, I think, like 12 number ones. I don't know if you wanted to be on 12 different committees. Um, what does the asterisk mean under? Oh, those were his highest choices. He oh, I didn't even know that. I never even noticed yeah, he that. He emphasized three of them. Oh, I didn't even see that. So I, I missed that on the spreadsheet. Well, I think, John, you got them, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, at any rate, so um, this is my, nomina you know, my, my nomination. And some of the thinking that I, I put into this is that a couple of different things. One is that um, there are some boards that folks have been staffing for a long time. I just thought, well, maybe, you know, let's mix it up a little bit. Um, there's other things where people haven't been working together. You know, we're a new board. So um, I wanted to kind of match people together who might not have worked together. The idea here is, is that we're going to work our best together um, you know, to, to staff these committees and these boards as much as possible. So um, this was my best judgment in terms of what I think um, could um, serve us best. Again, you guys are just seeing it for the first time. Um, if you know if somebody like raises their hand right now and says, "I absolutely do not want to," you know, feel free to ask a, a colleague to switch out. Um, but this is this again. I, I put a lot of thinking into this over pretty much a 24-hour period, 
and it's my judgment on sort of how we all work together to staff these okay. committees. Just to be clear, this is for the uh, starting July 1st, for the next fiscal year? Um, yes. No, I'm right now. I'm, I'm right now. Oh, just through the end of it. Oh, well, no, yeah, no. We've been in these jobs for a year. Right. So it's. Oh, starting now. Starting for, now, for and, and we'll do it till next year. And, you know, if. Um, right. uh, uh, because we, we did this, I think, when we reorganized back in the beginning of last so, April. So through the next reorganization. So this yeah. will be starting now, going forward. Yeah. Um, and then and the next chairman will and, and, do it a year. And then, you know, Seems figure like. out when the next time, the best yeah. time to do it is. Um, okay. So that we can all, because this is really the first time we're talking about this right. when all five of us are together. Yeah. So I just wanted to get it done. I wanted I want to get us working as, a, you know, both out there in the individual committees. Right. But also together. So, um just, just one note on the yeah. RMLD payments subcommittee. There's a, one voting member, but Vanessa's obviously out. Yeah. And Very welcome to attend. Yeah. And on, on, on those, I, yeah. anything that's sort of RMLD, because Vanessa, you sort of played that role when you were on the FinCon before you got elected mm -hmm. um, and, and attended those meetings. I think you and um, you and Dan would make a great team mm -hmm. on that. Um, one thing, too, I wanted to point out, um, and I actually did not come through on the on the printing version. So um, where it says Board of Selectmen Basque, um, I have myself and Dan as, um, as the two members. And uh, my thinking on this is that since we're already sort of way down the path of trying to fill all the uh, boards and committee uh, assignments, and we've already kind of done that, what I'm proposing is is that we get through the end of June when we right. make those appointments. And then Dan and I will have, you know, we'll flip a coin. One of us will step down. Um, and then I thought Vanessa, um, actually you can't see it here because it got cut off, but Vanessa, I thought you would be the person to kind of step in and be that second Basque person. And then what we would probably do, because the way our policy is, is that you have two, you basically no one can do more than two years at a time. Dan and I are now doing our third year, is that we would say, Vanessa, you're going to do a two-year term. And then right. whichever one, Dan or I, when we duke it out, <laughs> who wants to go first, <laughs> would be a one-year term. So at least it'd be one year of working together. And then then Dan or myself would step down, then yep. you would sort of elevate and we'd, pop, we'd put someone else into the new two-year term. So that's always kind of revolving. Yep. So it did, I apologize, it didn't come out on here, but that was the thinking in terms of VASC. Everything else is pretty much straightforward. Um, and I would propose sort of starting it. You know, I have no, uh, no problem with Barry, um, I, I think you mentioned like the, 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 the transitioning VASC. Uh, uh, doing it that way at the last meeting so you had, you had uh, I don't, yeah I can't remember if I actually yeah, answered no. that no. so but, uh, but just to explain why mine were in late I there was a sort of a conflict between it wasn't on the agenda so I didn't think we were going to be talking it tonight about it tonight although Bob did send an, an email so I uh, I, I um, and it wasn't wasn't posted so uh, we want to be careful of. Um, I, I don't. I'm not sure if there's any other way. No, I mean this at is at this I, point. Yeah, I mean I thought about that, um, but I'm not going to be here next week. Then on the 19th, we're, reorgan uh, we're reorganizing. Mm -hmm. That's all going to get lost. And I thought this is just our own internal organization. Yeah. It doesn't really impact anybody in the community. Yeah. Um, so that's why I sent out the email specifically. Um, you know. Um, so that you know, I would have time to kind of work on it because I did put a lot of thought into this. About Understood. I was just, I was just uh, got mixed signals okay. on that. So, and then the other thing was, I think a three means you're not interested or least interested yeah. or something like that. Just, um, I, I thought it was. Uh, I misunderstood the instructions. So okay, <laughs> All right. just because I put a three down yeah. committees and sub, you know, commissions and right. and boards, it's not doesn't mean I'm not interested. Okay. Can I repeat one little piece of my laser? Uh, yeah. Andy, we're going to post. We post a number of uh, vast meetings. We're going to make one of those a fully posted selectman meeting, mm -hmm. so you and Vanessa and John mm -hmm. can attend. Good. Uh, pick the one you guys get. Send us your nominations. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, Bob, yeah. um, for all the members, once you decide on, on what the uh, roles are, uh, if you would let me know what your preferred method of communication with your liaison groups are, mm -hmm. I can tell you, generally speaking, if it's a volunteer board, um, you will be put on the distribution list for agendas. Right. right. Um, but not necessarily packets, because not every selectman in the past has wanted that. So you really need to communicate through me, and I, and I will through the department head, if you have preferences. 
And um, for those that are liaisons to departments, it's a little harder. Um, you know, fire and police don't have meetings right. like right. tonight. Right. So um, you know, we'll we'll arrange meetings uh, as you wish with uh, you know the department heads. But the uh, the whole point is this is meant to improve communication. But part of that is on you to tell us how to communicate with you. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming once we, uh, I mean, do we, do we formally vote on this, or we just? I not? think you should. Okay. In the past, you know, you haven't, but now that you've got a new policy in place that says it should be approved. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm assuming that once we do that, Bob, you'll this will be it, this will be circulated, and then everybody yep. will will get. Um, yep. And then the other thing too, because. Um, there are some people who are now going to be serving in capacities that maybe they haven't before. If anybody has any questions, um, either I would encourage you to ask me, because um, mm -hmm. some of these ones I've served on that I'm kind of sort of giving up, um, or talked about who can put you, know, put you in touch yep. with relevant staff. Um, but I think this is a good plan, um, and I think it's going to get us out there in a really um, positive way. So was there a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, move the board to approve the, shall I call it the draft liaison assignments uh, uh, developed by Acting Chair Berman, dated 5-14-18. Second. Any discussion? Sure. Um, I'll, 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 I guess I can go first. Um, there are some cases, I think part of the liaison function allows us to uh, get to know different entities in town that we don't normally interact with that much. It's a good learning experience for selectmen. So in that, in those cases, I think that um, if people have been liaisons to a BCC for a number of years or a department, um, maybe we should think about switching it up a little bit to give um, others a chance at I did a little bit sense. of that um, mm -hmm. but I, I, I tried to juggle because um, that is a good point because first yeah. of all the board is never going to be static right there's always going to be new people coming on the board and, yeah um, and yeah. it's also going to be new volunteers coming on all the different committees yeah. um, so I try to kind of juggle between what people really wanted to do and then moving around like for myself I, I, since I've been on here I've, I've been a, a liaison to the library. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I did that during the point when the library was getting built, which is really probably one of the most important mm -hmm. things. I've done that. I'm now asking you to do that because I think you would be tremendous at it. So I'm, I'm giving one. You're not going to build something again, are they? No, no. <laughs> they, they not, not for another 125 no. years, right? Okay. Um, obviously, Ooh. Vanessa, you're new, so everything on here you're doing is really for the first time. So, you know, I try to juggle and balance that. Yeah, I see um, that. I and, see that. Um, you know, obviously, if we go through half the year or, you know, or, or again, even if it's another year, we get to do this every year. So yeah, yeah. it's like, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, there are public meetings you can go. Yeah. I mean, just because you're right. not the True. liaison doesn't, no. you know, preclude you from coming. Right. Although, like, um, some, of the some of the departments, they don't have public meetings right. that we go to. Right. So. But it's just, you know, a way to kind of keep, yeah. keep your ears mm -hmm. in the ground. So. Um, any other discussion? Yep, Bob. One point, if there are two selectmen liaisons and a member of the board who is not a liaison wishes to attend, please let me know because we yeah, need to post right, the board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We do not post the board to attend any of these meetings unless we know. Right. I mean, and some of those I think Bob will know. I mean, if there's like, you know, if there's a, a meeting issue, with like yeah. ZBA where there's going to be 300 people there, you know, that might we all might be interested in going. And, you know, and then, and then the other thing, some, you know, I sort of struggle with that idea because if I just made everybody have one, because I, I think everybody right now has about 12 to 14 different assignments. That's a lot, right? Some of them are shared. No, some of them are shared, and, and some of them don't really have meetings. And, and if some of them do meet, they're not, I would call a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. So I would rather err on having one person go, mm. right, mm -hmm. or, or two, than have no, nobody go. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So yeah. um, that's why there's two, but there may be those, those, those times. So if you're thinking of going to a meeting where you're not the liaison, and you know, like on council and eight, and you know Dan and John, or the, you know they may both be there. Just let you know, let Bob know. I think the two assignments is actually a good idea. We've actually, so some of these over the years, Dan and I have kind of tag teamed, but not officially because right. Right. we just have, you know. Um, and and it's part of that thing that you're bringing up, Andy, that you want to get to know what's going on in a certain mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the fact that you've added. That you've made a couple of these 
you know, a, a two-person yeah. official is probably a good a good idea. Um, the one the one thing that actually uh, Mr. Kruk is here. Um, should ask him. So, um, since I've been around, the celebration committee was never something that was ever really a big kind of thing. I don't think, I don't know if, any, if anybody ever went to any of these, but now I think you're involved in planning the 375th. It could be some more activity coming on that might require some work from this board. Yeah, I mean, the so I, you know, I should have maybe asked whether you wanted to liaisons or, or you could decide that down the road. Or I'm not directly involved with 375. Oh, I thought I you were. A lot of people who are. Okay. So. Well, you, oh, yeah, that's right. You just won the trivia contest. That's why. You lucky and good. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. But yeah, I expect there'll be a lot more activity around that. And that might be sort of maybe more ad hoc uh, participation on our part. But. Yeah. I think it's also important to say that uh, liaison assignment does not mean that select member board members have to attend every meeting. Right. Right. Um, you pick and choose. Right. Um, it would be unreasonable to expect you know uh, some of you to attend every meeting. It's just yeah. not possible. So yeah, the beauty of YouTube, oh, although right. being there does have its benefits. Uh, yeah, and, and that's why you know, that's why you get the agenda in advance. Right. Right. Any anybody who is working on a committee with somebody else, if you know there's a meeting coming up, yeah, you know, text him and hey, are you going? No, I'll, I'll go. Okay, you go right. next one, and, and then brief each other on what happened. So at least you know we know what's. And if there's an issue that's of a strong interest, you'll probably know anyways. Uh, but department heads will let you know. Uh, you know, we really think we should have a representative at this meeting. So okay. you'll you'll be kept in the loop. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Ready uh, to vote? Um, uh, I, in, the, in along the lines of learning a new shtick yeah. um, in in some of these cases, uh, I haven't had uh, much education in police and fire, and and I, I, John, I don't know. Um, have you been on those for a number? Have you been the liaison to them for a number year. of years? One year. Um, so at some point, I'd like to get some more experience with them because they are do a lot in town. Well, yeah, yeah. that was a good example. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you know, again, so next year, um, wh whoever's the chair, just, mm -hmm. you know, um, I didn't even notice that John had put asterisks on there. I just missed mm -hmm. that completely. But if well, the things that you really wanted to, do, you know, just just let them. But Andy, because they don't actually hold meetings, you're, you're free to contact them or meet yeah, jointly yeah. or alone. Yeah. You know, but you don't have the restrictions. Yeah. You can take your chief out to breakfast. Thing. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, all right. Coffee with a selectman. Uh, with who? Coffee oh, paid, paid for by the chief. What the hell? By the chief. He was, he was very gracious about it. But I, I should contact Bob. Uh, yeah, it's always a good courtesy. Always a good yeah. 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 the chief, right? And yeah, it, 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 I think so. Right. And, and the reason there are specific liaisons for just a couple of departments is mm -hmm. for the departments to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Not so much the other direction. If they need something, if there's something going on, they usually go to you, and then they usually go to me, us, and then and then if you need us, and to you. Yeah. But it's not that often, John. I mean, how many no, times? it's not. No. I check in with them just because it's a matter of course for me, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I, you know, I, you know, I think it's probably a good idea. That's what I do anyway. Whether yeah. it's a good idea or not is up to somebody else's discretion. But it, it makes sense. Okay. Any more? Hearing none. All those in favor? Opposed. None. Five zero. Okay. So Bob, you'll get this kind of. I will. Posted for me. Okay. Great. All right. What's next? Uh, okay. T uh, town manager contract. So um, we're at that time of year again. I think it, it was our last meeting, or the meeting before. I had asked um, uh, Sharon when she was here yeah. to sort of pull together, and also maybe with Judy's assistance, um, the um, sort of the. Survey of uh, uh, town manager compensation and, and also potentially looking at some contracts. The way it stands right now is that um, because this board did nothing in February, Bob's third year of his contract has kicked in, mm -hmm. and and you are employed as of the end of August. August. Oh, August first of next summer. So uh, so the end of July, August first of 2019. Correct. Which basically it sounds like it's a long time. We're a year away, but I think now is kind of the time where maybe to get to get to get that sort of that data collected and in the past um, you know for the benefit of Andy and, uh, and Vanessa I'm not a real expert on it because I've only gone through one I think it might have been in my first year um, I think what the process is is that there's a subcommittee of 
uh, select board members that right, sure. um, will collect sure. that, meet with Bob, kind of, ha you know, hammer some things out, may have some discussions, and then bring back a final contract for the board to ratify. Do I understand that's what, that? That's what we did the last time. Okay. And you so, also work closely with town council. And we work with the town council. Okay. okay. All right. So what I'm going to suggest, you know, sort of the same process is that, um, you know, I would like to do that. And Dan, I'm going to ask you to assist me on that. Sure. Um, and, you know, we'll collect that. Uh, I just want everybody to know that this, you know, the, nothing's going to get done behind behind closed doors. We'll bring reports of progress. We'll bring progress reports. And then ultimately, this board has to vote and ultimately support the contract. So it's all going to be discussed and it will all be public information. But in terms of sort of, you know, sitting down with Bob and, and calling through the data, it's best done as a... And, and uh, Dan assisted me the last time. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I mean, we'll, I mean, Dan, you're, you're the Grover Cleveland of, uh, of this board. You've, you've gone through one term, a long break, and then another term. Oh, very good. Term, so, very good. Um, That's a first. Yeah, hmm. so, um, so, and you've got that sort of institutional knowledge. And, you know, I've, the only other con, I mean, I've done some contract negotiation, most notably my own. So, um, I know you've done a lot, so I think you'd be a great okay. asset to assist. So, happy um, to assist. Bob, did I leave anything out on this? No, just the board at any time if they wish. Uh, or I wish can go into executive session to have a detailed discussion. Okay. So we've never done that in the past, but it's an okay. option. All right. And essentially, we should aim to wrap this up by end of year. January, yeah. Um, November. December. You know, if, if for some reason I'm not going to be here after next August first, by your choice or mine, um, you really need. I'm going to say a minimum of six months. And probably nine months to, to know that so you really ought to get something wrapped up I'd say by the fall okay uh, and I'm not suggesting there's a problem it's just conceptually yeah that's how much lead time you're really gonna I would suggest the end of Q3 yeah. Yeah. be the target I instead of the end of Q4 okay. yeah so yeah so basically according to the contract if um, if I think if you if you decide that you want to Pursue nothing, other things. If, you have to give us six so months. If nothing happens, it ends. Right. Because it cannot extend again. Right. So it's just done. If neither right. of us do anything, it, it stops. Right. If I wanted to leave early, I could give you six months. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're right. You're I think Q3. Right. Okay. Yeah, the Q3. Well, one of the differences the is um, in, under Mass General Law, superintendents of schools can roll over year e eternally. Right. Uh, there is no limit of three years, but that's the only position, so that they don't have that. There's a definite end date on the mm -hmm. contract, but for town managers and others, there is. So, the, so there's a de definite end date, but then what the school committee would just do is just vote on extending it by one year, or right? Or they kind of roll it over, and they, or they what becomes a the the default. If they don't do anything, they have to take an affirmative. It just vote continues to, to okay. not to not do it. Actually, we have to do a, we have to do an affirmative. You do in this vote. instance because yeah. it can't roll over. You didn't have to previously. All right. It could roll one more. Right. We just we basically took no action in February. By and, February. and if school okay. committees take no action. Action, it couldn't roll forever. That's that's the difference. Uh, all right. Okay, got it. All right, so that's it. So in terms of that, I know I I had talked to Sharon and, and and Judy, and I know it's a really really tough time, especially for Judy, given um, all of the different positions that we're trying to fill. Um, you know, so is there any you know kind of reasonable expectation about when we can get things done? If you want, to talk to can them. I call her myself? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sharon had said to me within the last ten days, we have received some contracts. We're making some progress. I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll I'll touch base with Judy and then Terry and I will. Right. Very good. Okay. Um, any other questions on that? Okay. Moving on. Select board policy article one discussion section one point four communication. Bob, I think this is wrong. I don't think it's the right um, uh, notation. Um, I think one point four is something else. Mm. No, here's what I have. It's in the packet. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yep. All right. Well, my bad. Um, I, I th what I wanted to do, and again, I apologize for this. Um, you can hear I'm not really firing on all cylinders. My intention was to sort of write out, uh, for lack of a better uh, term, some study questions that I would have got to you ahead of time. Mm -hmm. and I just, I just couldn't. And I apologize for that. Um, I think we've um, done a really good job. I think in sort of already talking about. Um, uh, responsive communication. What happens when somebody um, contacts us? You know, whether it comes, Bob responds, 
um, and how we do. I think we've kind of, I think we've had, um, I think we've had some really good progress and discussion on that. I don't want to really kind of go over that much t tonight. What I want to focus on is sort of um, proactive communication. What role of any should we do to communicate to the public um, the things that we're working on, the things that we're thinking about, the things that we've voted on, the things that we've done, um, if, whether that's through um, the website, through electronic media, which then opens up a whole other can of worms. Bob, you had sent us over some, um, uh, I have some samples, policies. Yeah. But I just thought, I, I really want to focus on that. Um, I know that there's some clearly different, if not competing ideas here on that, and I want to get a sense of the board about what you think our role should be in externally communicating, whether that's a Twitter account, a Facebook page, um, what are some of the other things people use? <laughs> I mean, basically that. I mean, you see um, some towns have it. I know we have it on the town. We don't have it from the board. And I know it opens up a can of worms in terms of, well, because now it's public, it, it has to be kept as public record. Do we have the ability to do that? And also serial communication becomes an issue. Yes. But I just, I want to get, I just want to throw it out there and I'm going to sit back and I'm going to let you guys sort of talk about what you're thinking is, what you think we should do, what you think we shouldn't do. Um, and we can just kind of talk. I just want to, I, I think you all know this, but I want to say it out loud. Um, there's an important distinction that you need to discuss between you all having a certain account and you having a collective yeah. account. Correct. Yeah, that was another part. You can all part have of it a Facebook page as a select right. and do and say anything you want, right. more or less. Right. Um, it's very different when you agree to have a shared right. five person. That's, that's actually a really good point and one, and one of the things I actually had written down um, because you know, people want to, you know, if they get something from, you know, from you know, Dan Ensming or Selectman, well, is this Dan's idea? Is this, right. is this the, the, you know, did Vanessa agree with him on this? Um, can, can Barry reply to what Dan wrote? Because, um, you know, maybe I said, oh, good job, Dan, or, or Dan, maybe you missed this point. Now that's two people. Now Vanessa can't do it because now that's a third, well, right? So here's, here's the, the vital distinction. Uh, I think we have to be very careful about using this for deliberation. I mean, we're not, you know what I'm saying, right. formative yeah. things. It's fine to use it uh, without cross-commentary to report things that we've done to convey information. We have to be very careful about using this as a deliberative medium for the right. reasons just cited. Right. And I think that, I think the state's slowly coming up to speed with Facebook and uh, the yeah. possibility of deliberation one person says something here, another one, and, but it's all, we can all see it. Um, so let me ask you, Barry, so this is not in the, the this proposal is not in the packet. No, but this you is You do this have some basic, other stuff about right. electronic, okay. Right, um, uh, my, what I wanted to really talk, because I think it's sort of, it, it's something that we've never really, we've talked about it a few different times. Um, we never really came to agree, but we never really spent a lot, uh, a, a tremendous amount of time thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, and even deciding that's something that we think we should do. I think we need to sort of figure out, is it something that we want to do? And if there's agreement there, figure out, well, how are we going to actually do that? Is it, be, you know, do we then form a another liaison thing, sort of, you know, uh, select board communication committee, where we'll, obviously there's two members, right? Yeah. Um, in which case, decide what we're going to want to post. or. Do we want to bring it to the board first to then decide what we post? Do we work with staff? Do we rely on staff? I mean, those are all, that's if we decide we want to do it. Right, then there's the question of the how. Um, What's so, the goal? I think the goal is for us to be out there as much as we possibly can. Um, and I think that- Out there. Out there in the community, more. communicating with what we want to do. The thing that, the reason why I really started thinking about it more, um, more than ever before, was when we got the surveys back, mm. right? And the survey, people said, how do you get your information? This is when we took, when, when we surveyed about kind of the last override, the October 16th <coughs> override. And I just remember when Jane Miller was going through it, it was like, you know, b big bar graphs. And it's like, hearing from my elected officials, it was like it barely registered like a, you know, a thumbnail, yeah. right, in terms of, now, does that mean because they don't come to our meetings or watch it on RCTV? Well, you know, there's other ways to get it. I, I think that, you know, we, we're doing some really fun and exciting things in this town, right? And um, 
I think that for better or for worse, Facebook is the way people communicate right now. They don't get, hell, they do, I read the Chronicle. <laughs> um, you know, Bob, they read the Post, you know. But people are looking on this more than they're looking on anything else. And I think that. Not um, all people, but. I think, it's, so, yeah. I think there's, yeah. there's a high element of risk. Yep, I don't Absolutely. disagree. So, what about this? I, I, I think to better communicate, communicate with the community, it's going to have to be a multi-pronged approach mm -hmm. because yep. a lot of people use Facebook, a lot of people don't. Some people use e email, some people use their website. Um, so, what if? What do you think about the idea, Barry? If you want to, if, if your it's idea not just is, me, just, just right? No, 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 no. Okay. What do you all? Barry's idea is to get out there. What 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 the select board is doing? Um, because not everyone watches our meetings. What if we sort of wrote essentially a liaison report after our meetings? Um, I'm not sure how it would work out. And put that uh, this meeting happened. And the select board did a, you know, A, B, C, D. Just a quick hit of some of the things we accomplished. We voted on this tonight. We voted on that tonight. Um, Who would write it? Uh, yeah. Any one of us could. I mean, I think that's, <laughs> yeah. see, that's where the risk runs. Yeah, that, exactly, John. Opinion. And I don't have a great answer to that in, in a timely fashion. You know, I, I, look, I, you know, the YouTube is available. I mean, if... I, you know, how do you pile another job on somebody? But we have minutes, that's going on, but those are draft minutes that are waiting to be approved. But they're I mean, available. You know, they're, yeah. but, so, you know, I don't want to say that this is a redundancy, but in some ways it is. Um, and then when you try to think of, think through who is actually going to write these, yeah. um, look, we all have a style, A, we all have a style, right? B, we all, you know, have our own personal slant, much as we try to be objective. I, I don't think there's any, I don't think that's arguable. Um, it's, it's demonstrated itself, you know, frankly, over the course of the last couple of years. For five different people. Yeah, exactly. So I think the idea of, you know, trying to have one person writes it or two people write it, and then you have to go back and forth on that. I just, I, I understand what you're trying to accomplish, and I, and I, people do need to know as much as they can know, but they have to take some responsibility themselves for, you know, going after that. And part of what happens on Facebook, for example, I mean, there's a Twitter crowd and there's a Facebook crowd, and there are some people that do both. Mm -hmm. But probably not as many as you think. I mean, you're kind of one or the other. So which one do you go to becomes the first question. Then, you know, the next thing that comes up is you go to Facebook and we all know that that can be a valuable tool. It can also be a sewer. Um, and, you know, it has demonstrated itself that way. You know, in our town, oh, spread out over seven or eight different, um, you know, Reading pages. And you know, a, a page is labeled one thing and then, then something else materializes on it. We've all seen it. Um, and it comes out in a, you know, with great vitriol. Um, and, and then it doesn't seem to matter what you put up there, somebody's gonna attack it. So I, I, all I'm saying is I, I, I applaud the idea. I think there's a high element of risk in this thing and turning it into something we don't want it to be. I think you just have to be careful. I think there's multiple issues happening here from what I see. Um, one, there is the idea of um, the board being more visible and more accessible. So I think, Barry, correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea with having perhaps a select board Facebook page is to say, this is what's coming up. We have a meeting. These are the things we're going to discuss. At the end of that meeting, um, any one of us could say, these are the results, these are the votes um, of 
these particular agenda items. Here's where you can go for more information. Um, John, to your point, I think you're right and that there people do need to take some initiative in being informed. At the same time, I think it might be unrealistic to expect people to sit through um, all of these meetings. That I agree with do. that. So I have however, that myself. However, <laughs> no. however, if we were to make it easy for people and provide a summary, um, the minutes uh, the purpose of the minutes is for record keeping purposes. They're oftentimes delayed. The staff needs to process them. We need to vote on them. They sometimes go up months after the fact. I think the minutes are. But they actually are accessible to the public immediately upon creation, legally. Upon creation. Yes. Um, Not a draft approval. copy. Yeah. Under draft copy. They can call Kayla as soon as she types it. They can call her. Yes. That to me is not accessible. It might technically meet the legal definition, but. If what we want is to inform the public, then we need to make it immediately available to them without any further effort on their part. I think if we were to have something like a select board Facebook page with one of these summaries that says, this is what was covered in the meeting, this is how the votes went down, this is the implication. We could even take turns doing that so that there's always a different voice having it. Um, and by posting it on the select board Facebook page, uh, one, there's no deliberation um, because we're not having a conversation. We're simply stating facts of things that have already occurred or simply posting meetings. Um, and if people choose, we can share that on the Reading Parenting Network or, or any of the other groups that exist on Facebook. The discussions that follow, we don't necessarily need to participate. They do what they do. I, I get that they the find their own way. And that could be, a, that could be like a little... Um, so, I know, sorry. how about this then? Um, at some, I mean, the draft minutes are available at some point in time. They aren't approved, you're right, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, for various reasons right. that could happen. But um, if the turnaround time is days or within a week, and I don't know, is that realistic? Yeah, I try to have them do like <coughs> So, you know, so the draft form could be, you know, posted as a disclaimer that these are, this is a draft form unapproved, you know, they're done by an objective, you know, yeah. third party and right. they are, and they are, they will ultimate in some form become the legal record of this meeting. I agree. They are a legal record. Um, they're not resident friendly. They're challenging to read, they're lengthy. Mr. Arena said this, uh, or Mr. Halsey said this, uh, Mr. Ensminger said such and no, such. No, Mr. Arena's not, not saying anything anymore. Right. Who knows what he's saying? <laughs> <laughs> he's, saying he's probably watching uh, saying something right now to yeah. me. But, uh, uh, so, um, <laughs> but, falling off. <laughs> um, so, but, but the point is, it's, it's sometimes five pages long. If we want people to be engaged, if we want people to be interested in what we're doing, we need to make it digestible, easy, and immediately accessible, and relevant, which means in a timely fashion. Um, the minutes are great, they're required by law, we should be doing them. Um, that's, not that's not necessarily communication with residents. Great. How would you deal with this situation if uh, someone posts the summary, I have a material disagreement with some of the facts, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. you, you, Dan, How, what is the means of correcting You mean that? the person who reads it or you, Dan, yeah. as a selector? So, and I suppose something, yeah. say, that's exactly, that's not what happened at all. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting it across deliberation. If, if I could correct it or do anything, I, I don't know how you deal with that. Dan, could I? I will not have had a chance to review like I would with minutes. Oh, you know what, so I'm just we have a, a way to member of the fourth estate out here. <laughs> yeah. Steve, Steve and Crook, uh, 157 Pleasant Street. I mean, for example, you could post that you had a fire department badge pinned. Right. With a picture. You had, you had, yeah. D, you had DPW a proclamation. Yeah. You had a, a police proclamation. Next week you're going to talk about, um, you know, dual dual meters for lawn irrigation. Uh, no, we're not. And, and, well, <laughs> oh, yes, we are. <laughs> well, you're going to talk about oh, I'm that. See, right away we have a problem. <laughs> we're going to talk about tree lawns. Yeah. Right. Or, yeah, or yeah. painting paradise and painting it green or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a fact. This is going to be on next the next agenda, or this was on this one. And, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, like, like, so you're saying like a, a like you know a nice picture yeah. of the, of the guys in here with the, maybe a copy of the proclamation, and then say well, that's, next time okay. you see you know see a see a firefighter say yeah. thanks or and then next week we're going to do this. If you're interested, come down or turn turn on the TV. And you might yeah. also say you discussed the communications policy and how better to reach out to the tent. Right. This is a fact. You, you don't right. necessarily mm -hmm. get the details right. of. What specifically? It's, it's like the police department's uh, Facebook page. So they made a recent narcotics bust and got a whole bunch of narcotics, a whole bunch of money. Yeah. Or they ha they are having an open house coming up, or just had one busy. Well, but Dan brings up a good fun. point, though. Uh, cool stuff. What if we do have a conflict? What if? Yeah. What if Dan posts something and I disagree with the way it was written? Because of the minutes, we have a mechanism to address that. Because that that goes that speaks for the board because right. it comes from the board as a vote. And so I, I'm wrestling with how you deal with that. I think when, you know, when we talk about, talk about this philosophically, we would have to have a policy in place to determine how we have a write-up um, of what we post. Um, given that it doesn't have the same process as mm -hmm. the minutes. Um, because I do think that's valid. We can, we can delegate the writing of it maybe to staff. I know like in Wakefield when they came in on the arts thing, they have like a social media coordinator for the town. I mean, basically every day you turn on your phone and if you and if you joined up to, to get those mm -hmm. things, the first thing while you're drinking your coffee is a feel good story about what they're doing. Somebody's doing out there. And you know, I, I, I think the negativity, some of the things out there will get totally mitigated if people, even if they just saw it for 10 seconds and they go, oh, I didn't know they were doing that. And it's just a cumulative effect of, of bringing town government to people. Well, so we have the right people in the room, you know. I, was just just thinking. I mean, so, so for example, I mean, every day, I, I mean, I get the patch by email. Yeah. However, I will see probably most reading things that I read on the patch that comes through my email, right. I'll see on Facebook because somebody's yeah, picked it up and yeah. shared. No, because it has Reading Bob, Post. Does Bob does the, post it? Yeah, well, yeah. In, in the Reading Post, you know, is you see what's going on in every selectman's meeting. Yeah, the Reading Post is an ex. I'm going to sing your praises. You guys do an excellent synopsis, I think, of our meeting. And Al does yeah. the same thing, and I happen to enjoy reading the newspaper. Yeah, I, I get it every day. Al's I wish I'd read it. more. So, you <laughs> got to print you more often, though. Yeah. Dan, yeah. Uh, if, if I could um, it, see if I could address Dan's concern, which I think is a, a very real one, um, and still fulfill the concept of um, letting residents know what we're doing. And that is simply to uh, put up on our Facebook page the agenda. I know it's posted somewhere in the town site. We put it put it up as a first step mm -hmm. on the agenda, and then um, we could write a policy on this or whatever. But you can simply go by agenda items and say simply board discussed or discussions will continue, or board voted four to one or whatever to the, so people know in, and it needs to be short because yeah. people people's bandwidth is stretched very thin these days so the minutes are great they do what they need to do and the vid, this video is great they do it does what it needs to be done but we have things on the agenda that we discuss and sometimes vote on and it, I don't think it could you could in any way bias it somehow by saying uh, the vo the board voted on this and this well, is the reason. If you limit it to the stuff actually voted, I think there's a lot less problem. Right. Uh, and, and again, if you get discussion, you know, I, I'm not a stenographer. No, I don't want to. I, I wouldn't. I'm not yeah. proposing we say yeah. anything about how the discussion went. Simply say okay. the board discussed this and decided to. Uh, just pick it up again or you know some very formulaic that doesn't go into any details okay. but it lets the people know at a quick glance on the Facebook page uh, what we're going to do at a meeting it's another way of getting the word out there yeah. what we plan to do rather and what we hope to do <laughs> and then if there were any votes taken what those votes were and and then say see uh, the RCTV for um, more details. Actually, this could address it because if this is a prime example, we're not yeah. voting yeah. on this particular policy. We're having a conversation on general communication yeah. strategy and efforts. Right. That's it. That's the bullet. Okay. Um, 
because it's, like it's not a matter of opinion. It's just simply what we're working. And, and this would be the board's Facebook page as opposed to individual. Right. Okay. Bob, um, who who maintains uh, and decides what to write on the town Facebook page? Now I know, like obviously, if there's a street closure, well, obviously that's a information you want to get it's, out there. It's a combination of Jane and Matt. So, together. so here are two sto two things that I still remember, right? Because I just thought they were really cool, right? It was when the two guys from DPW, two oh, guys, yeah. Stan and I forget the other guy's name, right? A picture of them out on the um, on the on the big trucks, stringing the lights on the car. <laughs> Everybody goes down there for, for tree lighting, and they go there. Oh my God! All these lights. Two guys, yeah. right? And Jane just wrote this story about Stan, and um, and I apologize to the other, yeah. other guy. And it's like that is something like you know that's a that's a feel good kind of story that you know it happens once in a while where basically you're honoring an employee, yeah. right? The other thing that just happened a couple of weeks ago, somebody um, I think it was on Baldwin Road, an owl fell out of the tree, right? Turns out one of the water department guys is a falconer. Right? Oh. They knew exactly what to do. <laughs> they brought in one of the trucks, they put yeah. it up 30 feet, and they brought the, yeah. the outlet back. Yeah. Now that, like, that is an, a cool and amazing story, right? And maybe part of it is every week or 10 days you do an employee of the, you know, a little story about what somebody's doing, an officer, a teacher, well, no, we wouldn't do a teacher, it's not our job, but, you know, somebody like that, and interspersed with, Right, kind of. Oh, and this week we're going to be meeting and, and talking about this. Or part of the page could be like what I talked about. Some of the two or three things that I really want people to go to: the Garden Club thing, um, the Memorial Day. You know, we're, we're going to be there. It kind of gets it out there that we're we're communicating. It doesn't have to be. It could be including some of the more drier. Here's the agenda. Here's what we voted on. Dry. <laughs> yeah. Dry. Yeah. I mean, dry, dry minutes are dry. Right. Yeah. Um, it could be it could be sort of a combination of all that stuff where it's like you know I don't like the word because it sounds like we're trying to sell people on something but our marketing page you know it's our town marketing page and so if somebody comes in and you know the, the people are going to be on the rant they're going to be complaining about this and that fine right but also there should be people knowing that what's going on here that's good and you know um, I, I think there's probably a way to do it I think there's probably some towns that have done it um, I think it needs people really putting their heads together. Maybe it means, you know, we just, you know, I don't want to give anybody any more work, but, you know, a subcommittee of, of folks will put, put together to say, if we're going to do it, this is what it should, this is what it should look like, this is what it should do, right? Because, I mean, uh, of those risks, maybe it, we involve Ray, I don't know. Um, but we should probably check the state, too. Yeah, I mean, we have, well, Bob sent some of those policies in the towns. Yeah, I, I, I think this select board page, Facebook page, should be different from the town page. Um, yeah. There should be a town page, and I heartily agree with your ideas about having an, an employee of the week, employee of the month, and highlight what they did. Um, our page would be a little... Uh, more, you know, dry. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so like it, it would be less. It might have a little flavor. Some empty but chips. people care about the things, you know, that we do, and this would be a good, uh, quick hit way for them to find out what we discussed, yeah. and then if we voted on. That's it, where the problem speak. is. What we discussed. If you, no, no, no. If you follow, what we yeah, voted on. Just follow the. That's agenda. fine. Okay. Well, I think, well, just like we're discussing this here, we're talking about communication. Um, one of the bullet items could say, discussed improving communication strategy with residents. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And John, I didn't, mean to, I, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to use the word discuss as in describe what we discuss, you know, how, how, what right. we talked about. Simply, it was, on, this is what's on the agenda. This is coming up this Tuesday night. And then afterwards, we could even take turns and say, uh, just go down the agenda and say, okay, well, we voted on that, we discussed that, we voted on that, and, and, and type in exactly that. Well, For discussion, see RCTV. Bob? I think the board needs to take a couple of steps back and re-examine what you're trying to accomplish. If it's marketing, 
That's one thing. Well, that was my first question, Bob. I, I agree. Marketing does not mean every single meeting that you have something that's interesting to market. Honestly. Right. So it doesn't it have to be picking out occasional things that are really interesting. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, although this might be not your long-term objective, is to have all of you or, or some group of you send ideas and work with Jane on things that the selectmen are doing that you want Jane to include on the town page and see what the public's reception to it is. If you're looking, and one of the questions that I'll ask right away is, when you put this information out there, are you open to comments or are you closed to comments? There's a huge difference. Right. So I, I think on something like that, if we had our own page, my thought on it was going to be this. I've never administered one of these pages, but you know, it's like, so here it is. And, and like, there's always like a little flag or a caveat. Um, if you have any comments, um, or we'd like to talk to selectmen individually or as a group, you can reach them at selectmen.ci. You know, they can okay. write whatever they want, but if you want a response to any of that, the, the, the vehicle is you need to contact them through the normal channel that we will not be responding to. Yeah, I think that's good. Well, yeah. you don't necessarily need to even allow comments. Right? Yeah, my feeling is not that. branding or right. marketing. I don't that's think that's true. our... Don't I don't think we're in the business of branding or marketing ourselves. Oh, I disagree. Uh, I, I think that, um, I think where this has value is improving communication and getting out the word to the town about this, the basic facts of what we do at, at each meeting. And, and that could, it's the, the agenda, and then what was decided or if it was just discussion, say discussion, see RCTV, very simple. You think that plays well with the survey comments? Is that what you, you think people were asking for? You, you've spent some time on this, you were telling yeah. me. Yeah, I, I mean, I I, 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 I I, see a trust gap that was seemed to be evident in the presentation that was to us, and I think the one way to increase trust is uh, more communication, but by the nature of the sport, it just has to be just the facts. Mm. Well, weren't you doing that, Andy, for quite some time? Are I was. You still I, doing it? Yeah, I, 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 I've been good and bad at it from time to time. Uh, on, a, I have a, a blog that I would put up what meetings were going to be held yeah, in town this coming week, yeah. and. Um, a lot of but but yeah. it wasn't that bad. But but only like seven eight people were looking at it. So so <laughs> I think that's that's the, that was that's my next question. Yeah, right. yeah. What was your reaction? Yeah, you because you've been doing this already. Yeah. You're getting seven or eight responses or notice. Yeah. Well, I was doing something a little different. I was just giving people a heads up, mostly hmm. about what meetings were going to go on in town. It was just a compliment to the, what the town already does, ex except except on clicking on the calendar date. I just listed them Monday through Thursday, what was happening. I think this is something different. This is something, you know, a number of people have said they, there's a, a trust gap, I, I think was the... Was and what the is that trust gap? I mean, you've referred well, to it three times now. Uh, uh, so I want to know what it is. Yeah. What's it your was, take on what they said? Because I don't feel yeah, untrustworthy, it, just so you know. I'm not accusing you of being trustworthy. Okay. I'm but just I mean, you continue my, to bring that up. My, what are the yeah, examples? Yeah, let, let them, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that to the extent that people put down um, they wouldn't vote for an override something like because they didn't trust the Board of Selectmen. Um, the way to the best way to counter that is to say, is to give information as much as possible. Um, okay, let me, let, I, hold that thought for a second, yes. okay? Because I read the trust gap a little differently, mm. right? When someone says, I don't want to vote for the override because I don't trust the board of selectmen, mm. is that because there's specific actions that this board did or didn't do that they didn't like? Which yeah. may or may not even be related to the override. Which may or not even may no. be true. No. Yeah. Or is it because they don't really know what the board of selectmen's doing? In which case, when you say, when I talk about marketing, um, the override, and I use this as an example because this is the most recent thing that we had, people basically had to look into their heart and soul and say, what do I value, what do I want? So any, any company, any entity, we do it for economic development. We marketed ourselves to developers and investors to come into this town to basically, you're not telling them a BS story, you're basically painting the, the things that you do well in a really good light. And if 
200 people see it who never saw it before, then I think it's a win. And, and so because then they'll, then the next time we go to them for, for something, whether it's an override, a debt exclusion, something happened, they're going to have a more intimate understanding and knowledge of what we do. Why? Because we're bringing it to them. So I agree, the minutes and all that stuff's important, right? I'm talking about, you know, basically bringing this into their living rooms and into, and into their, you know, onto their phones. And I'm not talking about just, you know, cherry picking and you know, all this stuff. Sometimes there's some really critical hard decisions and, you know, we're not always going to agree, right? Um, but if people can get a better firm understanding of what it is your town government does. You know, like, like the guys who came in today, it's like, will that break down some of the trust, the trust gap? I think it does, because now people say, oh, they do that, right? And, and so, you know, that, yeah. that's, a, that's a piece of what is driving it in my mind, mm -hmm. right? It's not maybe the exclusive piece of it, but I think a, a, a component where we're, where, we're, where we're being proactively communicative about the issues facing the town and the things well, that have let, Let's not be talking about building the case for another override just yet. No, 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 no. Let, no, no. Let's, no. let's talk right. about how Five, we're going to be... Five, ten, fifteen years from now. How we're going to be... Damn right. Uh, <laughs> if I have anything to say. Uh, build the case for how we're going to prudently spend the funds that they have given us. Exactly. Well, and one of the ways we can do that is to make the information on how we're discussing those funds and discussing the town issues and discussing economic development mm -hmm. in an easy sort of bite-sized, digestible information. And yeah. I want to take it one step further. I want, I want to take a step back from just social media because there's certain policy parts of social media that get complicated, especially yeah. regarding open meeting lots of but open, but social media only targets one segment of the population, and that's Some, yeah. people one that are on social others. media. Yeah. Um, we have people, you know, young and old that are not on Facebook. Yeah. So in my mind, it's the same snapshot of what we've done, making it perhaps available on the town website, uh, yeah. so that you know, can we have printed copies at perhaps the library or the senior center where other print, people might print be on, who aren't on yeah. social media? Still. So I, I want to make this broader right. um, as far as yeah. not catering strictly to people on smartphones. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what I'm sure the state senate and uh, house candidates will be doing, lots and lots of direct mail. That's what they do because that reaches people. Right. We can't and, knock, and knocking on doors. Uh, um, with your permission, I'd like to ask the three members of the public what they think the board should do. <laughs> <laughs> Are they really the public? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what can the selectmen do that reaches the community in a meaningful way? Do you think? Mr. Crock. Stephen Crook again. Uh, putting a shameless plug for our <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. No, don't some, be some, some don't be ashamed. Back, some years back we had a program asked the town manager. Uh, yes, we did. The town manager would go on what up with, with a host and would say, Hey, you know, this is happening in town lately and yeah. whether it was you know, you've got you've got upcoming um, Friends and Family Day, but the reason why you can't get a bowl street is because the gas company's digging it up to lay in May because the old one's all worn out. Whatever else, can we take phone calls? Back in yep. the days when people called in and somewhere. From Bill Brown. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there you go, like, you know. Yeah, you're sure it doesn't have to be the town manager. It could be town manager, it could be other town staff, it could be a yep. road table member of the selectmen of the others. Idea. I don't think. Maybe we think the amount of these things. But it's another way to get the information out. Steve, uh, Steve, how do you think that was received, the, the Meet the Town Manager? Uh, do you have feedback on how well that went? I, I always enjoy watches. You found out sort of what was going on. Did your community feedback of any sense of how many people watched it? I'm not sure I had the large community yeah. feedback on it. Just sort of my own impression of it was always, just, yeah. oh, that's why this is going yeah. on, or that's why whatever project or thing in, in town of late, or what was what the hot topic was. Um, you know, or, or for example, back to the social media side for the segment that uses that, you already have, um, Maureen Knight puts out the bi-weekly newsletters yep. by email, so here's what's happening in town. The selective news <coughs> on, on Facebook or by tweet, hey, here's what's coming up. Here's, you know, whether it's coming up at the meeting or just coming up in town, you know, maybe just the, the garden clubs having their flower sale this weekend is coming up. Or we're discussing this major thing at our next meeting. And 
if you have if you have ideas or thoughts, you know, again, email or call, mm -hmm. you select them. Right. So I would, I would consider doing, going back to something like like the ask of the town manager. You know, in that form, I don't know. You don't think about that. It's another way to get out there. I have two points. Um, one, so um, several months ago I was speaking with a resident and he said, I never know if I'm watching the right video for the select board meeting. And sometimes I'll be an hour in and realize it's the wrong video. It's last week, so. So, oh. yeah. Um, so would it be possible to have this agenda displayed for the first 10 seconds oh, of that's cool. a video before it's posted so that people know the topics that are being discussed. Uh, well, the chair does go over the agenda at the beginning that, that people can get cued up. Steve, do. question. Steve, um, a few years that, ago, that's not a bad I'm sorry, um, there is technology and there was discussion at RCTV of linking segments of the video to an agenda, for instance. So you could click on an agenda oh, online okay. and go right to a uh, video clip. Have you caught any further with that? I haven't thought about it for a couple of years. That's probably best done in the stuff that gets streamed through our YouTube page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where, where we the isolate some chunks out. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's to, to whether you're watching the right meeting or not, we put up fairly regularly, you know, say, for select, and we'll have the data yeah. as the date. well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you're but going you back, yeah. you may not always know. If I go back three months, yeah. I may not, at a glance, be aware mm -hmm. of what topics are being covered. And it's a four-hour meeting on any given night. And while the chair does review yeah, I think it's the better. agenda, you know, it's a simple scan as you're sitting right. there with your computer. Well, the trouble is with the scan, in standard def, it's going to be unreadable. <laughs> In high def, you might have a chance in 4K. Oh, you know, reading it on good. yeah. Mm -hmm. Until we negotiate a new contract. So, so um, yeah. you, you could, after the fact, I suppose, could edit in and, and cut and then yeah. insert, you know, simple text. You know, the one line on the agenda or this now, this coming, perhaps. But that would be additional work mm -hmm. and, and piece mm -hmm. it through. Um, I want to. I want to. I wanted to do a couple more minutes of this, and then suggest the next step because we do have one more agenda, and we have to go to yeah. uh, executive session. So, mm -hmm. um, anyone on the in the in the crowd or in the board have any other? Well, what you don't want to do, I think, is uh, give the appearance of trying to manage the news and uh, be just another uh, opinion. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. going to do something. It'd be boring as hell, but just say what you, what you voted. Uh, you know, you voted unanimously, usually, whatever it is, and say what it was, and um, and have the agenda, and, and, and just say say the the votes. I mean, the votes are really what's important. Anything beyond that could be opinion. I yeah, really agree with that. I think you post the packet. And you post the agenda, and then you post the votes. If there's a vote, great, yeah. post it. And we could even, at some point, if we got fancy, put in the timestamp on where each discussion, where each agenda item started. Is, is there a single web location where one could? Two of them would be the one would be your RCTV YouTube. That's the actual record of the meeting, the actual videotape of the meeting. And the other two would be the agenda and the packet. Can those three be kind of linked together yeah, in can, one? We can do any of One stop on shopping. On the web, uh, yeah. web page. We yeah. can do anything you can imagine. Okay. Um, let me just see ahead. Yeah, this, this is a page that's just for every board and committee. It lists all the minutes on the left and all the agendas on the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so there's two links for the selectmen that can be copied into the mm -hmm. selectmen's page as well as YouTube's. Without so much we can work. provide yeah. a little easier one-stop shopping for selectmen information. Does that kind of answer the mail? I, I would suggest that given the way this, this conversation's gone, that you bring in Matt and Jane Miller okay. or meet with them one of them. So that was, that was what I, I, because again, I mean, we, I, I know we could talk about this for a while and, I, and, and Celtics are playing it. I'm not feeling cool. great. Yeah. So, yeah. can I can I suggest you know a, 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 I'm willing to work on this. There's another one of the members here that would like to work on it with me. 
to sit down, work with Matt and Jane, come back at some point, maybe time uncertain, but with some kind of you know more fleshed out kinds of things. Maybe we looked at some what some of other towns have done. Um, I like Wakefield's. I mean, I, I subscribe to Wakefield stuff. I you know it's like wow, why don't we do this? What is it? What town of Wakefield? Stuff. There's like a because there's there's non-town Wakefield stuff. Maybe that's what I get. I mean, it's, but it's a hard distinction. Yeah, it, but it, it's it's hard. But I know they have a social media coordinator, right? So obviously they're thinking about it in a way. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if the rest of the board doesn't mind, let, let's send Vanessa and myself off to the sure. library and whatever. Sure. Sit with Matt and Jane. And, and I hope we're going to get rid of use of stationery and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. I was waiting to get that golden boss stationery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that might become something else, like a, oh. a disclaimer at the bottom of every email response or yeah. you know, or electronic. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting when you look at the old policy. Yeah. It's, its guts are still good. Its yeah. tools are wrong. Right. Right. Yeah. The manifestation. Is different. Stationary for email, for instance, yeah, it's yeah. not bad. Right. Also, I think uh, Bob, do we have a formal social media policy in town? Like this um, plane We have a draft one going into the personnel policies, um, so it's not a not a final. Was that was that going to apply to boards, committees, and commissions as well? We don't, we don't have the authority. You would. Right. Yeah. So I, that, yeah. I think, I think this is an important adjunct to what we're. Uh, right. Oh, this yeah. came off before but you came on. Yes. Well, what, if, if you could send those out again, the yeah, plane yeah. field. Thank you. Um, Actually, I think they all kind of looked sound. I think I think plane field wrote it. Everyone else copied it. I have it somewhere. I mean, yeah. I mean, let me just Andy, you have yours. Let me just read yeah. you the ones we have. That was the best of the breed. Um, Easton, thought. Templeton, West Boylton. There you go. And Plainfield. Yeah, just send them out again. I, can I think those are more for, like, you know, if you work on the police department. What you well, it also applies to us because it is yeah. some, thou shalt well, nots in there that are, are very important. These are selected yeah. social media policies. So yeah. this oh, is what's like the yeah. West right. yeah. You know, it is a board of selecting policies. Okay. So, so they're, they're not going to reinvent the wheel. With other no, policies. but I, I remember looking at it and saying, like, That's this That's pretty is, recent, too. I remember yeah. reading those and saying, well, it, it, it gets at some of it, but no. Right. So, so let's, yeah, that'd right. be great. Um, are, we, are we good on this? Anybody sure. else want to? Yeah. Um, at some point, you're obviously going to need to work through town council. Yes. Yeah. Um, on behalf of town council, he doesn't want you to do anything. I know he doesn't. <laughs> well, mm, all know. of this is risk. John's yeah. right. It's, man it's managing risk. And I, you know, Visually listen, fine, collectible I, 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 think, I think there's a little bit of risk that, that might need to be taken in order yep. to be out there and communicating it in a in an effective way. So right. obviously not exorbitant risk, but that's, yeah, that's and I think I'll loop Jane in, ask her what uh, best practices are, and she'll let her go find them. We just happen to find four. Okay. And then and then we can <coughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I think this was a really fruitful discussion. I, I, I at some point I really we're either gonna do this or we're not, but I wanna just finalize it and I think we're kind of in the right direction. So um, the last thing on here before we approve minutes and go into executive session um, is it's actually kind of a uh, um, continuation of sort of our liaison discussion, which is sort of the economic development project communication. Well, I guess liaison. And Andy, I had asked you to do something, mm -hmm. which you got back to us. But you now, of course, I won't be able to find. I got it behind me. If that helps. Oh. Can we take a two-minute break, Barry? And are you feeling?
So this is just a motion to this house give keeping. Bob yeah. you know, authority. The council has said it's okay, but I'd feel better because your documents were adopted through a hearing process. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd feel better that you said said to me it's okay because yeah. yeah. the hearing process. Well, I, you know, okay, well, we're not at the discussion phase anyway yet. Yes, for a second. Second. The discussion. Yes. So, um, to Bob's point. I mean, we were constituted a certain way. The state continues to recognize us a certain way. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I know the town meeting took its, you know, took its action. Um, what is this motion really about? I need to know before I vote. Yeah, the um, what town meeting did was only to change the general bylaws. Only thank you. Any other actions is at the will of the board. I'll say. Um, you have currently a, a set of Board of Selectmen policy documents up on the website. If you're going to be known by another name, I think you should change them to Select Board Policy, Article 1, Article 2, so forth. And all the references in those policies should change. Um, I will tell you uh, a snapshot of executive session through negotiations and without objection, I'm changing references to you as a body to Select Board. In legal mm -hmm. documents, so that mm -hmm. seems to be the direction town meeting wanted. This agenda for today's meeting says uh, yeah. board of select. Yeah. Yeah. Would that's, it be that's would, harder? Would it not be prudent to? I mean, if you're going to make make sure this is 100 percent official, wait till the AG approves. Sure, certainly. Good. Then we don't have to change it back in case she has to sure. change of heart. Yeah. <laughs> so the AG has to approve town meetings. Uh, Any yeah. bylaw or zoning yeah, bylaw change? I mean, or you're right. Until the AG has said something, it's not official. I mean, unless you not. feel you must be asking for this for a special reason. Only because we're working on board of select and policy, yeah. so it dawned on me. No okay. other reason. When will the attorney general? Uh, takes a couple months. Yeah. yeah, won't be that long. Well, I think once the once the once the Attorney General blesses it. I think that we should just go forward and change everything. So then can. we'll leave we're everything as it. is because yeah. you know we have a lot of work to do on websites. And for instance, right. the minutes template is hard to change. <laughs> um, some of the things through uh, the, the website we can't do. We have to get a vendor to do things. So we'll just wait. We're going to retroactively we change all the minutes to say no, 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 no. This no, will no. be from the time that. It's, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to create yeah. unnecessary no, 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 work no, no, for the no, staff. No. Let's just wait for the yeah. Attorney General. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. I mean, we're still going to refer us that way um, and then you know the paperwork will catch up so it's actually starting to roll off the tongue a little bit it is, it is isn't it just like Ms. <laughs> yes <laughs> um, all right so do we want to just pull this motion or just That's fine I don't mind yeah, you wanna, so I'll, I'll leave, withdraw right my foul. motion with the uh, okay of the secretary I think I can yeah. <laughs> did we did put it on the did? table I think I, I did oh you did okay, okay. all right cool yes. okay all right. All right, let's move on to the um, economic, uh, the economic the liaison. Andy, you, thank you for taking the time and doing this. Um, basically, I, I, we, we had brought it up, and, and the notion being that this is the first time in really I can remember in the history of the town, at least since I've lived here, that we've had so much stuff going on, different projects all at once. Um, there'll be probably five or six downtown projects, Eaton, Eaton Lakeview. Um, and, and given that sort of the neighborhood angst around some of the stuff, um, I floated the idea of at least um, unofficially, maybe not calling it a liaison, but a, a point of contact that That's neighbors could have on each of the projects. Andy, you wrote this up, and I, you know, we want to share it with everybody, and we can discuss and decide if that's something we want to do. And if it is, then we can just assign, you know, if anybody wants, you know, I'm not going to require anybody to do it. Um, but, you know, people want to take that on for different projects, we could do that. Did people read it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, let me ask you what your intention sure. is. Now, walk me through the process. If a question arises in the mind of a resident. Mm -hmm. What would this policy have them do? What would be the sequence of people they would talk to? So, um, I think there are, this would go in stages. Okay. Uh, um, it, it would be um, the selectman or select woman or member of the select board, boy, that gets difficult. Um, become familiar with, you know, work with the planning department and become familiar with, uh, hey, there's a development that's uh, looking like it's going to go up here. Um, and um, understand that type of development, 
um, learn the processes and general timelines for the proposed development so that and then reach out to the to the neighborhood um, and let them know of what's going on sort of get out in front of it um, so to speak so so that the the neighborhood knows uh, what's going on and can get involved in the beginning so so there's a, a sort of a two-way communication or three-way communication if you include the board um, and and then the second step would be during when the project gets approved mm -hmm. during the demolition and construction at, at that point the liaison would turn more into I, I envisioned it um, help communicate with the town uh, and vice versa so if people had concerns or questions we'd steer them to the right uh, department or if they, they, they were they were getting frustrated about something they'd have one of us their representatives uh, helping them out so what, what is different from today I mean that's what I do right now this week it's Tuesday. I've got calls from three of them already. And, and I, I have as well. And, and, and you know, so it's we, we what all we do. do. I, but I, I think it'd be, and and then the liaison would report back to the entire board um, what transpired during since the last meeting, if anything, on that that project. It would make um, we sort of be acting as a team with different point people on different projects. And, and yeah, oh, go ahead. So I, I have two points. Um, one, uh, just as far as your first point, Andy, the idea of the select board liaison for neighborhoods impacted by economic development, um, the concept of that individual reaching out to the neighborhood mm. has me a little concerned because mm -hmm. um, how do you even do that? I, I think yeah. the neighborhood needs to organize have to have a point first, of and yeah. then yeah. we can see. Right. So I think that that's step one. Yeah, um, I had a problem with that part of it too. Yeah, right. Um, but I, I think that's easily worked around. And to your point, John, um, as far as you know, what's different from now? Right now, individual neighborhoods don't have one person to reach out to. Um, there was a situation once with one of the projects where they reached out to the entire board um, and they said nobody got back to them. So I think when you email the entire board, it can sometimes feel like a black hole because you're, you're missing that personal contact. Whereas if you have one person assigned to each project, that's not to say that the others can't also assist or communicate on that particular project, but simply that we have one person, or at least this is how I interpreted it, that we have one person who's as close to a subject matter expert as we non-experts can get on this. Um, and really just to make it friendlier for the for a neighborhood, because for some of these people, they've never interacted with town government, and it can be a very daunting process to know mm -hmm. who to reach out to, when, how, what the process is, and we might be able to simply direct them to the right person. Bob is the right person, Jean is the right person, whoever. Chief Sagala. Right, depending on what the issue is. Well, you're absolutely correct that most people don't know how to navigate town government, and I really think that is our job. Um, one of the things I think you have to be very careful of is if you isolate the information around one person, then suddenly people feel like, oh, well, can I, can I reach out to Vanessa or do I have to reach out to Halsey because he's the liaison? I mean, you know, I think you, you just have to be careful of that. I mean, I have no intention, whether we do this or not do this, of stopping being involved in every one of those projects. I have been always since I've been a selectman. I always will be. And this won't change that. Right. Matter of fact, it it may cause it to get cloudy and I and I'm concerned as a well, result of that. I think that well, a couple things. <clears throat> first of all, on the first part about one pro before their projects, you already have that you have liaisons to CPTC and you have the liaisons to zoning. Until it goes through that, they're not projects, right? So if anybody has right. concerns, I mean, Vanessa, you attended um, uh, some. I've, I mean, I, I attended a bunch of them over the last year. Um, you know, 
because it was my I was a liaison and I and, and people they saw me there and they you know they reached out when they had questions or concerns it's when it becomes a, when it, after it becomes a project John no one's going to suggest that you're not going to be involved as much as you as you can uh, or want to be but I think it's important that each of these projects has okay you know they're, they're going to people who live in a neighborhood that no matter what it is if, if, if Berman's the guy they're still going to call Halsey Right, but there's other people in the neighborhood that don't really talk to any of us and said, "Oh, Berman's on this one. You know, I, I can call him." And again, our role is not to play the role of town staff. Right? Yeah, that was or, a clarification. Or, 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 to, or to intervene in that way. It's more of a, you know, ears on the ground, feet, feet on the ground, ears to the ground. Hey, you know, people are really concerned about this. Put a phone call into Gene, to Bob, to you know, whoever's involved, and say, "Hey, this is what we're hearing." And then, you know, we're the conduit. Um, I certainly don't want to get involved in, in any, you know, uh, in any, you know, people are upset about the developer because there's dust. I mean, obviously that, that there's an issue, but there's there's ways around that. I don't want to get a million phone calls. I just want to, I just want people to know that there's a place that they can go, and that we're more of the conduit. Um, you know, to funnel information, and then, and then, as importantly, to kind of follow up. Hey, did 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 you know TPW get back to you? Did you know just so that we're we're kind of closing that loop, sure. and then if not, then say pick up the phone and say, hey, you know they're still talking about this. Again, not to overstep and overreach and become what staff does, yeah, but just to sort of be a facilitator. Um, an additional communicator on what staff does. I think it's also important if you have one liaison, Barry, um, and everybody, um, that it, it prevents uh, if they contact, if a neighborhood group contacts three of us and, and um, there's a possibility of getting mixed messages on something and really the we, that's why I thought I'd write this, and we could, it's not perfect right now. It needs to be worked on, but it, it would be a way of um, one voice speaking to the, the neighbors and letting them know how the process works and helping them navigate it, and then we report on that back to the entire board so everybody knows what I'm saying to, or what I've been discussing with this neighborhood. Um, and, but again, uh, you're the role of the liaison, I don't even want to call it a liaison. Yeah, we can call it somebody else. Communicator is basically to sort of be the one who captures sort of questions and concerns and passes them on to relevant staff. And you know, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, we had some concerns about some um, potential hazardous waste material. Well, that's, um, you know, yeah. to the point where the level where it had to actually be brought up to but, the whole board. But I, I, at the point it was brought up, I had no idea of the involvement of DEP and right. how they have an on-site yeah. guy on call. And he's giving regular reports, and he can shut yeah. the whole thing. Now, that's going to be rare. Yeah. You know, yeah. In most I mean, the Board of Health is a different different animal than DEP. They're actually more powerful than DEP yeah. in some aspects. They can, but but in any event, um, that would be I'd see more of a, of a facilitator. You know, when and I get calls like this at work where someone said, I called uh, this department in my town hall about this site, and then they put me over to this person, and I wasn't able to leave a message. And then they're frustrated. Yeah. So this would be someone that they could no, go no, to. Another town, right? Yeah. It, it was not, never read. <laughs> well, actually, I don't, work, I don't work I on yeah. one Bob, did you have something? Uh, good test. Um, yeah, you, you, raised, you raised a question earlier, which is a question I had is, mid-large development projects. Tell me what that is. Mm -hmm. How do you define so that? Didn't they put a footnote in there? Is this a big deck on a house? Or? You mean somebody that has started to go through either CPDC yeah. for 40R yeah. or ZBA for 40B. That's easy to define. Right. I right. understand what that means. So that's got to be defined. So if that's what you mean, Honestly, you have to be really careful not to be micromanaging an appointed board. Also, right. the appearance of that—it's not no, just that. No, no, no. That's right. why it's like after the fat, after it's already and, and been if you, through. If you consider, for instance, Eaton Lakeview as just an example, before they went to any other body, they went to conservation because they wanted to first understand. You know, for any given Go site in to. town that's being developed, we can probably tell you there's been three or five developers that have looked at it. You don't want to be in part of those because right. you know three out of four are going to disappear. Right. So you really need to define when is the selectman have interest. 
I think once it gets approved by ZBA or, or, or CPA. I, I wouldn't, you know, or, okay, you know, if it's oh, approved, that's approved. fine, but it could be when it appears in front of a board as right. opposed to it's just a thought. Well, if it appears before the board, you have your you have your CPTC and you have your zoning, ZBA. Because the liaisons. records here, for instance, attend a DRT meeting. All DRT meetings are well before anything's approved. Right. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, never I wouldn't, want to I, attend. They're not really a public meeting. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I wouldn't. Meetings. They're not. They. Where are they? Let's say DRT they're, meetings are public meetings. Those are just staff. Right? No, they're not. They're like a staff they're meeting. Staff. Here, the staff. public is invited if it's pertinent to if they're are involved. They? No. They're no, 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 no. There's a reason. So, for, for example, yeah. if you're having a if you're having a DRT about the Fall Street Fair, you're going to invite the Rotary Club, which is oh, part of the. certainly. But that's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Participants. Yeah. So you're going to invite the participant, Correct. who is a member of the public. Are meeting minutes recorded for the for DRT yeah. meetings? They're more like notes. Yeah, that's true. They're they not just hand out for everyone else. Yeah. But that's because um, one of those two bodies, ZBA or, or CPDC, <coughs> will inherit a project. And the meeting notes serve as all the background. They want to know what staff had as a discussion. Um, it's, it's, it's rare that uh, volunteer uh, board members are invited to those, but Virginia is a good example. Yeah. Anytime there's a historic issue, mm -hmm. we don't have staff that does that. We don't, you know, we have a conservation administrator. We don't have a historic one. So there are occasionally volunteers in there, but they're generally not. And, and the benefit, as you see it, of keeping this as just a staff meeting is what? Uh, honesty. Yeah. You know, one of you go in the room, there's a mayor in the room. That's, that's the thought. Uh, developers won't be as forthcoming yeah. because they're not sure what's going to get out in the newspaper. So they want to give and take, a free give and take. And, and, they, and they get yeah. severe yeah. criticism from we, us. We did that at the PRA and at the city. John? So I have a couple of comments about this. Um, one of them is, you know, the whole idea, Andy, of mixed messages, they elect us for a mixed message. I mean, they want they want to hear what we each each in our own way have to say. So the idea of shunting that is is a real problem for me. Um, you know, as I said just a few minutes ago, um, we can liaison till our heads fall off. It's not going to stop me from taking a call from John. Citizen nobody and is. No one is putting well, the that's brakes not on what you, John. Just heard. John, no one is putting the brakes on anybody. All it is is designed to basically give people in the neighborhood, they've been organized neighborhood groups on every single one of these projects. It was Gould Street, um, Lincoln Street. I, I know them all. Right, okay, they're organized groups. Um, if they're given a name of a person to call, they can choose to call that person, they can call right there, go right to the top. All it is is just another vehicle for those people, and it's not putting the damper on anybody's ability to do what they were elected to do in their own mind. Well, just as a point of information, that is not what Andy just said. Okay, Andy said he didn't want mixed messages out there. So a mixed message is a mixed message, and people elect five different people so that they can get a message as we see it. We represent them as a group of five, not as one. I would say this to you just as a caution, a caution from my perspective. Every time you layer another piece of government on top of government that already has the responsibility, the margin for error, the opportunity for missteps, mm. the uh, you know the micromanagement opportunity that presents itself among staff. I mean, the only staff we have any kind of interactive management role with is Bob and and Sharon. I mean, those are the those are the people that that we actually hire. Uh, I agree, and I think, I think we have to be extremely careful. This is layering government on top of government and I and I find that offensive I think it, I mean it, if I may I, I think it might be looking into this more than it is um, as as I interpret this and we can fine-tune the language but I think the goal here um, is to be accessible to the residents and to give them a point of contact because it can be intimidating for people who are trying to navigate this who may not feel there may be people who are comfortable reaching out to you perhaps they know you perhaps they've seen you on tv um, but for those i think that are starting it, with no understanding of what this is and we, we've seen this process um, this cycle happening with each of these developments of 
panic, fear, and anger from these groups that are getting, from these, these neighborhoods that are getting organized. I think if we were to have someone to say, this is your point of contact, they can direct you. As if I were an economic develop, if I was the liaison to any one of these, my goal it would certainly not be to attend all of these meetings to tell Bob what he needed to do. Memorize the plans. To memorize, to understand the plans. My background's in marketing. I wouldn't be able to read half the plans. So my goal would be simply to be accessible to the residents and say, okay, I hear your concern. I suggest you speak to this person who can help navigate it. The next day, were you able to reach that person? Did they answer your question? But don't um, you do that today? I know you do. I yes. know you do that. But I think right now, with when you have these organized groups, and I think Eaton Lakeview has really set the bar pretty high as far as what an organized neighborhood yeah, is. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think if they, I know they've been working with Barry. I know they've talked to me. I know some have reached out to you. Um, but I think having one person would just streamline it for the neighborhood because otherwise, who are they supposed to reach out to? They can reach right. out to whoever they want. Then it could be the neighborhood group, or it could just be somebody who lives in that neighborhood that may or may not even belong to that. Say, so listen, I'm right. You know, I have a question on this. Who do I go to? And then, okay, well, well, but the, you know, the benefit of having one person too is that you're more, you may be more familiar with the stages of the project. Um, than the average board member. Might I mean, be. The, the people who are going to be most likely familiar with the project would be the people who attend the CPTC meetings or the ZBA meetings, you know, if they're the liaisons to that, or if you have a general interest or in Or if that. you have a cup of coffee with the developer, right. or if you right. have a cup of coffee right. with somebody from the yeah. neighborhood. Look, I mean, this is what I do every day. Right. Uh, right. So the purpose of this, just to be clear, is, is, is not to... Um, become a, a selectman who's making decisions on the ground. Not, not at all. Or who's doing something that the ZBA falls under the ZBA's purview. I respect all those purviews. And the town and the town employees' purviews. Um, uh, I think we really want to avoid, however we write this, we, we, we want to avoid giving that impression. Um, and, and basically, if we call it a liaison assignment. It's not assigned until there's a reason to do so. Yeah. Right, like there's five of them right, the now, right that are you know that are going to be happening. Um, uh, I'm really from like forty thousand feet or higher. Um, the, a project is approved. There's two types of communication that I can imagine happening. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, one is with town government or perhaps state government in a regulatory role. We have certain roles. The fire department has certain roles. The building inspector has certain right. roles, and so on. But the other is just more communication. And usually, town staff does not know the answers for communication. It's only the developer that knows. What is the developer going to do? Why did the developer do this? If it doesn't involve regulatory concerns we have, we don't know. And, and we wouldn't know. So I think it's important that you understand those two distinctions and try to figure out what are you trying to address. Both, which is fine, but they are different. Um, the town is not routinely involved in communication unless it involves a, a regulatory role. Now that's an interesting point. So how would a, a nighttime board have better knowledge if the right. staff doesn't know that? I mean, we could be a conduit, but if it's a con contentless con conduit. Down at the, uh, you know, the train station, I keep forgetting it changes the name. Jean has made the point several times. She doesn't know yeah. what's going on. The developer needs to have a website. The developer needs to communicate with the neighbors. But we made them do that. When they ask her, she says, I don't know. Right. <laughs> and so right. how are you going to know? Well, and maybe that actually brings up a really good point, Bob, which is that there that's seems to be holes between some of these, right? Between what the town is responsible for, what the yeah. is responsible for. Um, yeah. What if we were to have something to explain the process? It doesn't have to be long. Let's say when a development comes in, whether it's a 40B, a 40R, mm -hmm. or something else, um, this is the process that it's going to follow, generally speaking. Yeah, I think we have that somewhere, don't we? Does that well, exist somewhere? It's, it's I always think we do, trick but to yeah. Go through. Oh, it, it seems like as you were talking about it, yeah. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. But I, you know, that's. Uh, well, I didn't even. I didn't even know it existed. So. In fact, there's a marketing piece about uh, how to develop in the down. How to get. I think Andrew, your permits from Andrew yeah. Costello or 
Yeah. Yeah. Castell? Uh, yeah, the other guy. Uh, Corona. 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 Okay. Corona. That's, that's more for the yeah. development you know, side, there's, there's right? That's not cool, but it could be right? a reference material for the steps that have to be done. Maybe mod with some modification for the uh, make people. it resident yeah. friendly, yeah. so that yeah. the you know I, I think that might be a nice. This so is that's that's really good. Have you seen this? Yeah. This is this This thing is excellent. A year or so old. Yeah. Nobody knows it exists. Right. Well, it's how to do business in Reading, and it could be from anyone's angle. A resident could read this and understand it. But did they make? MAPC do what to or like they help us with yeah. that or yeah. you know it's it's just a, an overview a good it's overview the DRT overview, does honestly yeah. Yeah. where's that where do you find that it's under the planning uh, okay. department there's okay. a lot of good stuff under the planning department they like to plan yeah, <laughs> all, right. all, all right all right so, all right. so uh, again uh, you know is there is there interest in doing is there interest in pursuing this I think so. There is from, from me. Yeah. I, I have no interest in this. I would not want to be the central point of contact. Uh, and I would like to see it handled a little more informally. But I mean, I think back to Oak Street, we had a bunch of residents that came in uh, during an office hour I was holding. Mm. They had some specific problems. They assigned a representative from the neighborhood. And that, that worked out pretty and well. you wanted to do it because you took the call, the first call? Right. Uh, I happen to have office hours, hours out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, yeah. the office right. hours were yes. recording before every meeting, though, right? right? So, right. I mean, you've got that. Right. right. This is, uh, uh, what, what these developments mean? are yeah. really pretty long, and yeah. there's a lot of moving parts. So, my the, my intent here was, anyway, people call, and <coughs> they... They don't know who to go to or where yeah. to start or what the process is about. And it may be great to point to this, but... Um, when I, why don't yeah, we use when, office hours as a start for this stuff? When I, when I brought it up, it was, it was more about when these projects start to be getting yeah, shovels yeah. in the ground. Because yeah. that's where a lot of those phone yeah. calls are going to happen. I didn't intend it to be, you know, a, a, a sub liaison group of the people who work at CP, you know. Yeah. The CPC. Yeah, I see. So, uh, just that. If it was, if it was, if it was sort of boiled down to that, would there be greater interest on your part, Dan, to look at something like that? Jonathan, you're still a no, I would imagine. Well, I think it's government on top of government. I think we, I think we do this now. Is my, I agree that everything you said, Vanessa, is something that should be done. I think each of us have a responsibility to provide that, and I think right. that in general we do. Um, and I, I, so, to me, it's redundant, and the redundancy is layering in a policy. And as we already know, we have policies that can create, you know, confusion. I, I, don't, I don't envision this to be a policy. I just like this is just sort of a discussion piece to see, well, are we going to do this? And then, and who, then, who would make the first move here? Would it be them contacting us or us contacting them? I think it would. I think it would be them contacting us. Yeah, I have no. I have no. Yeah. You know. Um, I have no interest in kind of saying, oh, do you know that there's going to be a neighbor? So they <laughs> do over here in your neighborhood? <laughs> they do that now, so what's missing? I think maybe that single point of contact that, 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 that they could be, you could say, you know, if you don't know who to call, you could start off with Andy Friedman if it's going to be Lincoln Street or Dan Endminger if it's going to be, you know, Gould Street. And then... Um, but Dan, to your point, I like the idea of having this be informal. Um, yeah, John, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. We don't need a strict policy indicating yeah. the steps we need to take. But to yeah. your point of what's different regarding this policy over what we're doing now, um, as I've seen it, especially in the past six months, Residents are frustrated, and if residents are frustrated, then perhaps this is an area where we can do better. I think their frustration comes from a different source, personally. But you know, I could be, you know I could be wrong about that. I think their frustration is there's a lot of change going on, mm -hmm. yeah. enormous amounts of change. You have a whole change, district of change town makes people that's feel been fearful. I suspect yeah. we, we live in New England. Yeah. You know, you know, people don't people don't want to change their socks. Listen, pe um, people. I mean, they really, I mean yeah. look, I, I, it's just something I've observed is yeah. that, as a person that didn't grow up here, this is not a place that does well with change, and we have had a lot of things changing in Reading, and I think there is frustration. I think you sense it correctly, um, and I think we have to march through it and you know let them know that we're here for them. Um, I, I think that there again. 
you know, you create certain risks when you start to segregate things. And that's my only concern with this. Not that it's a bad idea that we are information central to the public. We should be. I mean, I think everybody here strives to do that. I, I know I do, mm -hmm. and I have every reason to believe that each of you do as well. We all have our own styles of how we do it. Mm -hmm. But, and, and it is our job. They elect us for this. Um, I, it seems like we're reinventing something here that could run a certain risk. And it could run risk with staff, it could run risk with other volunteer boards, um, it could run risks with knowledge sources for you know citizens um, and maybe what we have to work on instead is something you brought up a little earlier that I think can, it, it surfaced recently and that is when somebody writes to all of us we tend not to respond because either Bob's going to respond or he's moving it to the right place right. and part of the problem is occasionally nobody figures out who's on first you know I mean that happens it's, it's, just, it's yeah. human nature so maybe we need to work on a better hmm. communication system rather than a all points bullet kind of thing I think that would be more positive I think that I would be happy I think each of us would be if it if we had demand for an hour before you know when it's our turn you know once every five meetings um, and there's projects going on we could you know let on the town website let it be known or in the packet okay. that you know we're, we realize that um, um, Lakeview is going on you know and we're going to be available so John, I, I just think that's a uh, I would prefer that approach but that's so John, just I, I really like your idea of, of um, discussing the communication strategy as far as when someone emails us because if they email us they may be expecting a response from one of us and so that it, it almost feels like we're being um, negligent or, or neglectful ignoring perhaps them. that we're ignoring them well there is a simply, triage process but, I said simply, but if, if someone is reaching yeah. out to us yeah. Yeah. you know they expect a response from one of us the town manager is perfectly capable yeah. of handling it and might very well be the appropriate person to handle it um, but they've reached out to us our elected officials and they're not hearing from us so I think that's a different issue that we can address well, that's as far idea. as yeah. this uh, goes we could do a trial run and see how it goes if it turns out that it's not working that it's too complicated that it's a burden on the staff or what have you all it simply really is in my mind is just adding five sub liaisons with a name on it yep. right and then there it is for people to kind of I'm gonna oh, yeah. I suggest you uh, discuss this at your joint meeting with CPDC they're the experts okay hmm. see what they have for opinion and angle on all of this well some of this is after CPDC I, I understand but yeah. they're involved in most of the projects and then ZBA is really only in the controversial project. Right. Well, when they, after, after it gets passed, well, ZBA has to monitor to make sure they do yeah. it. Okay. But I, I think that's a reasonable discussion to, to get their feedback, see what they think. I don't know what they think. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cut the discussion on this because I'm, I'm dying, number one. Okay. <laughs> number two, um, we have some stuff to do outside. So um, I think this was great. You know, I, 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 I think we're in the right direction. If anything, the takeaway from this is that, you know, this board cares and, you know, we're out there and we're available. So um, we'll f follow up on more. Okay, so do we have minutes or no? No. No, no minutes. Time. Okay. So um, oh, is our. So we motion. Damn, you did I always forget. Like what? Ready to move? Yeah. yeah. For executive. Move to, to adjourn to the executive session for the dual purposes of strategy with respect to collective bargaining and strategy to discuss interests in real estate where the acting chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to adjourn without returning to open session. That requires a roll call. Um, so does that have to be seconded? Yeah, yeah it's all second. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Halsey? Uh, Yes. Mr. Ensminger? Yes. Ms. Colorado? Yes. Mr. Friedman? Yes. Mr. Berman? Yes. So we are. Okay. We're next door. Yeah. Stay here.